All right, here we go, Tony Yayo. Welcome Fly back. TV. Round of applause for everybody. Fly TV, baby. What's going on, man? All right, this is going to be the last interview of 2022. Happy New Year's to everybody. Going yes. to the interview with Tony Yayo. Yes. Who, who, who's better, man? Me and Vlad. Come on, bro. Dream Here we team. go. Here we go. Yeah. Well, we have to talk about this. Yeah. Since our last interview, Tory Lanez has been found guilty on all three felony charges. Assault with a semi-automatic handgun, having a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and gross negligence in discharging his firearm. Right. Number one, were you surprised at the verdict? Um, not really, because like where I'm from, if somebody say you shot them, usually found guilty. So like where we from, like where I'm from, like I would have copped out because somebody saying that I shot them and they willing to take the stand. Right. I'm just like, yo, I'm not going to take it to trial because I'm going to do more time. I'm wasting the state money. So me, I'm a cop out. So you never really see shit like that. You know what I mean? You never really, you know what I mean? Witness like, you know what I'm saying? Witness like people or somebody saying that you shot them yeah. and you taking it to trial. Like that don't really happen in the hood too much. Right. I mean, people, you know, I did all these polls and people like, oh, he's going to get off. Uh, Kelsey shot him. Uh, Megan shot herself. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. the victim, Megan the Stallion, got on the stand. Right. Because she is a civilian. She is a civilian. She, she never made the finger. any gangster music. Right. Nothing crazy. Right. She pointed uh -huh. the finger and said, that man shot me. Definitely. Did I a play def by me, play. I would have copped out. I would have been like, you know what? I, sh I shot her and I cop out and, that and that's it. Like, it's... Right. That's for me. You know what I mean? I would have been too scared to go to trial. Like, yo, I don't want to do extra time. Exactly. Over going to trial. Kelsey took the stand and changed right. her story. But if you looked at her original testimony to the police, right. she also said that Tori shot Megan. There is text messages oh, from oh. her to Megan security saying... Tory shot Megan. And the point of the story is that a gun is when you a super, when you Megan is a superstar, Tory's a superstar, right? right? You a target anyway. When you in the limelight, right? You do some dumb shit, you're gonna go down, right? right? So if there was a gun around, like people don't play around with guns. I never played around with a gun. I've owned guns before, yeah. but I never played around with a gun. Cause you could gun could go off. You see it all the time. People get shot by accident. A gun is nothing to play with. Yeah. Somebody got to be around people to be like, yo, we got to chill. Y'all making it hot. We on the block. Whatever happened, it just, it's, it's an unfortunate thing because he's going to jail on Christmas. Not saying he's in the wrong, in the right for what he did because where, where I'm from, like, I ain't never heard nobody really shoot a girl. Like, you shoot niggas, but really don't shoot girls. So it's, it's a strange case. If he would have shot a nigga, niggas probably wouldn't have cared. They would have been calling the nigga more of a rat, but it's a female. And you know what I'm saying? And sh she got hit in the foot. It's not an attempt murder. So for me, I probably would have just copped out. Not saying, you know what I'm saying? But look at Tori. You go to jail on Christmas. You think you're going to beat the case. And then my lawyer would have got punched in the face. Because hmm. I'm not spending a quarter million dollars and my lawyer's not telling me, yo, we, we might lose this. Like, my lawyer's going to tell me, if I'm spending 200000 300000 my lawyer's going to be like, yo, you know what? Before we go to trial, maybe we should cop out because they got all this evidence. Yeah, I mean, but you look at Tory, right? Mm -hmm. And he has no real criminal past. He has no jail time, anything else like that. I had Life Jennings on my show the other day. It right? don't Sit matter. Tory is not from America. He's from Canada. So right. once you violate, you're not from here. Yeah. I got plenty of friends that got deported. Well, exactly. exactly. You know what I'm saying? My man Rasta, rest in peace to him, he got deported to Jamaica because yeah. he was getting into trouble. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, look at the Shine case. The Shine case has a lot of similarities. Yeah, you're gonna get the to this case. Yeah, you're gonna get he the shot off a gun during an argument. A girl got shot in the face. Just like if we go to Canada and do some dumb shit. Yeah, like, you'll get you know fucked up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Shine did. I think he got yeah. ten years or eleven years. And as soon as he got out, what happened? Deported to Belize. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like, for example, I had Life Jennings on here the other day, right? And Life Jennings did like eleven years over, uh, you know, a murder that happened that he was, you know, somewhat right. involved in. Okay. And I remember he told me this whole story about his uh, his little cousin. His little cousin caught a body. Yeah. And they offered him eleven years mm -hmm. as a as, a, as a, a plea deal, but his cousin never done any prison time. So he's like, "Oh fuck, that ain't doing all that time." Whatever. He pleaded his cousin, "Please take this plea deal." Blue trial, doing life in prison. I mean, that's how it happens. Like, a right. lot of people, you got to underthink the average case. If you catch a body, it might cost you the 50000 going to 100000 So a lot of kids don't have that. So you see kids out here that catch these cases and they don't have the money for, for the legal team 
to get them at least less time if they found guilty. Mm -hmm. But it's all a game. I mean, from your point of view, mm -hmm. Because there was at one point in the trial where he could have taken the stand. Right. And he decided not to take the stand. In I mean, retrospect, I mean, look taking, at that case. taking the stand would have been a bad look for him. You know, people, you know how the internet is. Even if you're not telling, defending yourself, the internet is just going to go crazy on you. Because, come on, like as soon as he went to jail, what's the first thing that all, all the blogs and the posts put up? They put up that man, what he ate for Thanksgiving. Right. So while we eating good turkey and macaroni and cheese, we put up, what, what do you have, cranberry, so, cran Christmas, actually. Yeah, Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. It was Christmas. He, cri had, oh, he, he had, had four ounces of roast turkey, uh -huh. four ounces of mashed potatoes, yeah. two ounces of gravy, one ounce of cranberry sauce, right. four ounces of green beans, one cup of tossed green salad, yeah. a dinner roll, a pumpkin muffin, yeah. and a chocolate milk. That's why it's hard for a rap in jail. That man eat caviar pancakes, filet mignon, escargot, yeah. to that shit? Yeah. Pshh. Shit is rough. That's why I stay out of trouble. Cause jail and prison is a whole nother world. Yeah, I mean it's it's a whole nother world, bro. I mean the, the case you don't want to be there, bro. The case you know is a mean? mess. The case is a mess. And you know, like for example, I, I talked. There's this girl named uh, Megan the Reporter. She was like like this uh, this, this reporter girl that was at the trial tweeting everything right, right. that happened. Right. And I had a long conversation with because she was actually there getting to see how the jury reacts and everything else like that. And I'm like. From your point of view, were you surprised at the verdict? She's like, no, not at all. You could see, you know, because people report what they're going to report, but based on how the jury was reacting and so forth, and she said it was clear that there was some jury, you know, some witness tampering along the way because he right. tried to pay off a million dollars to Kelsey and Megan and stuff like that. And, you know, Kelsey changed her whole story. She said she didn't know who was paying her legal bills. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was I a lot of weird shit going on There's a lot in of weird case. shit yeah. in this case. And I agree with you on that one. Yeah. And listen... I mean, I know a few things about the details of this case that really are not public. Like and what? last February, say, talk, say it. Well, nah, you... because 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 I'm just gonna leave it alone, right? All right, all right. <laughs> but, but but the thing is, I said last February, I said, listen, I'll be very surprised if Tory does not go to prison. Or all I'm saying Megan. is, if somebody's saying you shot him and they're still alive and they're willing to take the stand, in my eyes, you're gonna beat the you're not gonna beat the fucking case. Yeah, I never seen that in my life. Somebody saying you shot him and you taking it to trial? Yeah. And I guess his confidence to taking it to trial, everybody believed him. The internet judge, oh, he lying. This, this one shot him and the girl shot him. It was a lot of confusion to yeah. the case. The sad part about it is just playing with the gun. When you're from the streets, you don't play with guns. Like yeah. you don't, you know what I'm saying? It's no, a gun is nothing to play with. It's not a toy. And some unfortunate happened because they said she got hit in the foot wrong yeah. or right she got hit in the foot well, and that's established because the actual doctor got on the stand who took out the bullet fragments right. showed pictures showed that she still has bullet fragments in her it wasn't glass it was actual metal fragments right and that's so that she got she got popped so i mean to me she's a civilian like i said before there's a difference between a man telling and a woman telling unless a woman takes down like a whole cartel or a whole mafia that's different, but if she looks good and attractive and has a nice body, somebody's gonna still mess with her or be right. cool with her or or be, it's not a big deal. Yeah, You know what I mean? If she's a street chick, she'll get a pass. And if she's a civilian, she gets a major pass. Megan is staying as a civilian. If a civilian get on a stand and say, yo, he shot me, to me, you're going to jail. Yeah. I mean, you and Uncle Murder uh, were on this. And look, 15. the internet don't care. They'll love you one minute. They're yeah. laughing at Megan. This is how fucked up the internet is. They'll laugh at Megan one minute, and then the next minute they laughing at Tory talking about what he had for, for Christmas dinner. Yeah. And the judge didn't have no sympathy. Lock him up now. Wasn't no, yo, let him stay home for Christmas, give him two weeks or something that to condone his family. That was crazy, but you know what? They look at you like you a criminal, bro. So they're they going to take you right there. Nobody's exempt. I went to jail before. I went to jail, got out, and went to jail the next day. Nobody's yeah. exempt. Yeah. They don't give a fuck who you are. They don't care if you Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly, whoever you are, bro. Nobody's exempt. If you do some crazy shit, you could go down. You and Uncle Murder uh, were on This Is 50. Right. And Uncle Murder wrap-up is crazy, too, man. Oh, you heard already? Yeah. I, oh, man. It's going to be okay. very, very disrespectful, <laughs> man. As always. You know what I mean? And make sure y'all catch Welcome to the Culture yeah. every week, man. Catch yeah. that. Vlad, thank you, Vlad, for helping me course, out with all this. Of course. I mean... Uh -huh. You and Uncle Murder were somewhat arguing because Murder was saying how, you know, Megan represents the streets and she shouldn't have cooperated and so forth. And you were like, nah, she's a girl. She's not a, a street 
she never like, made a street record. She never made an aggressive record, yeah. like, talking about shooting, killing, or anything like that. Like, Murder said something like Twerkalator, and Twerkalator is not even a, her record. It's the, I think it's the City Girls. Right. So I'm like, yeah, Murder, you don't know what you're talking about when it comes to uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah. You know, she's just... A, you know, she's she's an icon out here. My daughter loves Megan Thee Stallion. Right. She was a college student you know? before she started rapping. Yeah. I always, I always, I told Shem Money years ago, when Nikki, around the time Nikki came, because I, I remember when Nikki was fresh out with Fendi, I felt like Fendi didn't want us to get near her. Hmm. Like, like, Nikki was one of the first ones to pave the way, and all these female artists coming now was just Cardi B, you got Lotto, you got Rico Nasty, you got, you got a lot of girls that are kind of, Underground too, like my daughter will put me on to that are uh, like fire too, that got bars. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like the female rap is big right now and it's back, and you know, you love it. I mean, if you look at the situation mm -hmm. and you take the gun out of the situation, right? Nothing would have happened. It would just been a fight, maybe yeah, it a, fist been a fight. fight, and it would have been and nobody. That's no what, one would even know about it. This is what I said in the beginning of a conversation: a gun is not nothing to play with. So. Yeah. Whatever which way it got in the mix with Tori, Megan, and Kelsey, and I don't like to talk about other people's business, but I like coming to the show and fucking with you, but a gun is nothing to play with. Yeah. So me, if I was there, I would say, yo, let me be the calm down factor, and then I got to worry about you having a gun because this could go off any minute. Is there one in the head? Like, for real. You know what I'm saying? And where did the gun come from? Did it come from the security? Did it come from here? That's another thing, too. So there was a lot to that thing, but a, a gun is like, Definitely nothing to play with. When you have a gun, you're responsible for every bullet in that gun. Yeah. And, you know, I've had long conversations with, like, close friends of mine who used to carry a gun everywhere they went. They wouldn't go to the corner store. And you see it every day. You see people shoot themselves. Yep. Because I know people that shot themselves. You see people shoot their friends by accident. Mm -hmm. You see people um, shoot their um, they, um, girlfriends by accident. Like, so a gun is like nothing to play with. Like, you know, you never put a skirt on your gun, put a dress on your gun, got to show it off. Like, when my era, we never did that. We don't play around with guns. Like, it's one, for one thing and one thing only. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So playing around with a weapon is a dangerous thing. Yeah, and, and think about it just as a man, right? How many men who have a gun on them will take a high degree of disrespect and walk away from it? You know what I mean? Like, it, like. I could just, I could think of two situations in my life that if I had a gun, I would have killed the person. And luckily I didn't have one at the time and I'm able to walk away from it. You see what I'm saying? Right. Without, without having to deal with the repercussions. Now, could it have been self-defense? Who knows? I mean, it depends on, Who knows? Which, uh, to me, it depends on geographically it's different because in New York City, if you shoot somebody, there is no self-defense here, right? Exactly. But when you go to Atlanta and Florida, stand your ground. So if a motherfucker do some stupid shit, you know? Yeah. You know, and some people are right. They just had a dude shooting out the Lambo. They just arrested him. I seen online. Like, you know, shit is crazy out here. Sometimes, like, a weapon ain't nothing to play, and people are going to call at it. So it's like, you got to be careful what you say, what you do now these days, because yeah. the, the feds, they got Instagram. They got everything. They can see everything. It's like, it's not even... Yeah. It's different. No, I mean, they actually... In, in the trial, they actually played like security footage from houses in the area where you can hear the gun going off and, you know, they know exactly how many shots, right. the, the the time that passed between each shot. Like a neighbor came out and testified what, what he saw. Like, no, I, I think Tory, man, he's not, he's not a street guy. He's a, he's an artist. He's a singer. You know what I mean? No one looked at Tory as a tough guy. But when you have money and power, I mean, it could, it could turn you, it could turn you semi tough. I'm not saying he's not tough. Cause I, I don't know. He's what, five foot two. I don't know, but I know niggas that's five foot two that that got that have got the little man complex and to cut your face. Well, I, I get that. You know what I'm saying? I, I get that, that. So, but they usually have a reputation for that kind of thing. Yeah, I've never heard. Right. No, I've never heard nothing about Tory Lanes, apart from him punching August Alsina after the fact. Like you know what right, I'm saying? Right, like right. I've never heard of nothing about him being a gangster, a tough guy, a criminal. You know, nothing else like that. But sometimes when when people like you say that, he that might make him mad to go out and do some dumb shit. Okay. Well, but that's on you. Sometimes, and look, and look what happened. Sometimes ultimately. the things people say affect people. Okay. So I don't know. Like I know short dudes that are even more crazy because they short. So they felt like they always got something to prove. Yeah. One of my mans is crazy. Like he's short, but he's crazy. He didn't cut people and 
And I'm like, damn, he took he got carried away. But your whole life, if people feel like they could take you because you little, that makes you a little tougher from where I'm from. Yeah. Because I done been to jail and seen nigga be four foot five running shit or in the street, nigga be four foot five and put in work. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at these little kids now. These little kids, little killers, man. Well, after the jury, uh, you know, basically said that he was guilty, right. his dad loses it. Right. And course. he starts blaming Jay-Z and Rock Nation. Nah, man. Nah. That's, that don't make no sense. Yeah. Blame Rock Nation. Hashtag Blame Rock Nation started to trend on Twitter. I mean, I'm, I'm, I am I'm can't. My opinion of it is, man, like I said, a gun was in the play somehow, right? And something reckless happened. That's it. And it's a terrible situation that Megan gets shot. And Tori, you got a wonderful career. You're a great rapper. You know, a lot of people in the world love you. You got fans that you got to go to jail before Christmas. But, you know, you got to face that iron curse someday when you do something. That's what 50 grandfather told me years ago when I was on the run. You got to face that iron curtain someday. It's just the realities of going to jail. I've been there before. Like I told you, I went to jail and went to jail, got out and went to jail the next day. That's probably like in the history has never happened in hip hop. That was over the past and the issues, thing? And the issues we had like with G-Unit, like hip hop police was damn near created because of us. Following us home, Superman jumping out the car, curly top. Like, we had hip-hop police following us. They, Do you think they not watching rappers still? This hip-hop police in L.A., this hip-hop police in Miami, this hip-hop police in New York, bro. It's just new faces. A lot of them old-school dudes retired. Hmm? What's it like for a rapper in jail? Not prison, but actually in jail. I mean, it could be rough. It, it, you know, I mean, it could be rough. You know what I'm saying? Like, because people are not used to the conditions. Like, it's no more you you nobody. You just a number. They're going to make you feel like you're not R. Kelly or Bill Cosby. They're trying to make you feel like you just a number, and that's what you are, just like everybody else. And that's the harsh realities of going to jail. You know what I'm saying? I've been on an island. I, nah, you just a number. Motherfuckers don't care. If you get out of line, motherfucker will get out of line with you too. They don't care. And then you more of a target because people, come on, L.A. County, you know what I'm like? You seen they put up his his meal? Yo, Tory Lanez in here. That's the talk of the jail. Now everybody in the jail got something to talk about. So the whole jail is talking about Tory Lanez in L.A. County. Just like when I was on the island, the whole jail, yo, yeah, yo, on the island. I used to hear stories about myself. Yo, yeah, yo, got cut. And I'm on the bus listening to niggas like, they don't even know what I look like. Uh. Word, he just got cut in the, in, in, in the three building. And I'm sitting here listening like, oh, shit, this shit's crazy. Okay. Well, I remember you mentioned uh, when you were at Rikers, Flavor Flav actually created a meal. I remember it was the Jelly Jump Off. The Jelly Jump yeah. Off. What is it, the Jelly Jump Jelly Off? Jelly Jump Off is like, it's like a French toast with jelly in it. And it's like grilled like French toast, but it was banging. Like those, they were selling like hotcakes when I was on the island. Mm. So I, I always remember that. That was like some good shit. Shout out to Flav, man. Yeah. Well, what else is happening right now is the YSL Rico case. That's still going. And a bunch of people actually just took plea deals. Uh, Gunna was the first one. But then like Young Thug's brother took one. Right. Uh, Lil Duke took one. A bunch of other dudes right. that, you know, other people aren't really familiar with. Right. I don't, me, I thought about this for a long time just watching this case, right? Because mm -hmm. that, like I said, that case was like uh, watching uh, O.J. Simpson or watching, you know, some, the, the, the Megan case and the Thugger case were the biggest cases of the year. Everybody, if you got something to do with the culture, or you, you watched it, or even if you don't, everybody's watching. But it's hard to call somebody a snitch without the paperwork, but I think when that video came out, Cause remember, Gunna got out, and I love Gunna music. I love Thugger music. Gunna got out, you know, he had the bad chick with him, jumped in a two hundred thousand dollar Maybach. Everything was all Gucci, you know what I'm saying? But two minutes later, what was that? Probably like an hour later. Yeah. The film in court came out, and you know, of course, his lawyer wrote that. He didn't write that. His lawyer probably wrote that. But now in these days, when you got the camera, it just looked like you know they're gonna say you pushing, please. We ain't fucking with Gunna. Because, I mean, in this business, if you turn into a rat, it's kind of like career's over. Well, I remember when we had posted it, and I remember making a couple tweets about Gunner, basically saying, look, by him 
pleading guilty and saying that YSL is a gang. It's a criminal organization. Right. I've seen other members do crimes, you know, right. in, in pursuance of that gang and so forth. I'm like, okay, this is clearly going to be used as the overall well, people, RICO. But then a lot of people was confused and they were saying, well, what Thugger's saying? Did Thugger tell him to take that plea because he feel like he not coming home? We, we don't, we Thugger don't know. Could, yeah. Thugger could let his nuts hang and say, yo, you know what? Just take this plea. If that's the case, if he told him to do that, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of confusion. We don't know. It's just the internet is going to have two sides of the story. But the video in court, when you're saying, yo, is why I sell a gang? Yes, ma'am. Is this a gang? Yes, ma'am. Was the guns in the car not yours? Yes, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? That was part of his plea. Me, yeah. I would have rather sat a little longer because I was only in there for a year. I would have sat a little longer than coming out to, to what the internet do to you. Yeah, because... Me, gonna, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, uh, Cause it, it, how long he would have had to probably sit? Another year or so? Well, the trial is supposed to be coming up in January. Allegedly. Allegedly. January is right here. But what I'm saying is, look, was his, to you, let me ask you this question. That wasn't a good first day out for him after that came out. Yeah. For me. And I'm a, I'm a, like I said, I like Gunner. I like Thugger. I'm a fan. A lot of niggas in ATL. They got, you know, they had the game on Smash for a minute. So, but... That first day out, him coming out with the bad bitch and the Maybach, yeah, it was cool. But once the internet got to him with that push and please shit, that shit was a fucked up first day out, bro. Well, whoever recorded that. <laughs> if you didn't see that, I think if people didn't see yeah. that physically, but like, yo, he took a plea but didn't know what the plea was about, I think he would have been a little better than people seeing that actual video. Whoever recorded that shit, that shit kind of um, hurt him a little bit. Well, his lawyer reached out to me, uh, Steve Sato. You know, damn, and, you and call he calling big shots. His lawyer cool. Oh yeah, his lawyer called me directly. Shelter, oh yeah, no, he, he DM me, and then uh -huh. we got on the phone together, and we put out essentially a statement from the lawyer. But you didn't think you should have said to his lawyer, "Yo, why, why is there no cameras in here?" I mean, I think that's what would have been a little bit better for him because we can't. He, he, we, he. I already heard, seen the statement. His lawyer said he's not yeah. going to testify. Cool. Right. His we lawyer. Dig, everybody yeah. dig that. But when people see that on camera, like, I think that that was like the major blow. When they see. Right. You know? Well, I mean, you could film trials in Georgia. That's the whole thing. New York is different. L.A. is kind of different. It's kind of a well, case by case. Well, they should have fixed that. You should have had your lawyer say, you don't have no cameras in here to make me looking like crazy out yeah. here because the Internet's going to eat that shit up. They got to be a way because you, you didn't see none of Tory and Megan shit well, on camera. Well, that's because it's L.A., right? It's L.A. No cameras in LA. Oh, yeah, George is. I mean, I mean, you've seen like Young Thug in court already, like leading up to this. But you didn't see nobody really recording nothing on that case until that happened. No, no, no. That case, like I've been seeing Young Thug in court now for months on video. Oh, okay. Yeah, George is a little bit different. Also, it's a state case. Like feds don't let you record, but for example, state cases is basically based on the judge and also based on the city and state. So in this particular case. Cameras are allowed in it. And the lawyer reached out to me. He goes, listen, the way I set up his plea deal, yes, he admitted to what he ple you know, admitted to, but he can't be used in other people's cases. He's not going to hurt anybody. If he is called to testify, he's going to plead the fifth. So there's no way that he could hurt anyone so else. So it sounds like so his lawyer's official. He's calling you saying he's not so going to ain't tell. But, you you know, I mean, we'll see what murder say on the wrap up and certain <laughs> shit. <laughs> Because to the streets, they like, you know, I'm just saying the video was crazy. Okay, so from your point of view. My point of view is if the lawyer's calling and vouching and saying he's not going to testify with, no, with none of this shit, I, I still rock with Gunner. But the streets, the video, niggas ain't trying to hear it. Yeah. So, like, when I ask niggas, so, yo, what you think about Gunner shit? Yo, you fucking with Gunner? I ask mad niggas. Nah, 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 nah. Okay. All right, except for my nigga Light. My nigga Light was like, fuck that. Gunner for life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I don't know. I just feel like the internet now, I ain't going to front. The internet don't play. The internet is undefeated, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Even if he didn't tell, yeah. that video was damaging. That video was damaging. That's, if, 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 if it, like it, because what was being said. Yes, man. Yes, man. Motherfuckers have a field day with that. Just like they love Tory. Oh, yo, Tory didn't shoot Megan. But once his fucking jail course come up, how you think he feel? That's like a nigga being on an island and be like, what Tony Ayo had for knock on wood? What he had for dinner for Christmas? Come on, bro. Motherfuckers putting two ounces of turkey. People is laughing. They putting laughing. It's fucked up. 
So people will love you one minute and, and, and hate you the next. I've been through that ringer like that. I went from the G unit to the G unit. But for, for you to get back on top and, and get to back in position, you know what I'm saying, pause, you you um have to go through that. I mean, Hopefully do you, he don't do that much time. Hopefully, but see, that was the cop out. He could have probably copped out. Yo, I did that. Yo, give him five years, two years through probation. Yeah. Now you done wasted the state money. They're going to want to give you the max time. Right. That's He's facing how it 23 years. 23 years. He's 30 years old. Even at 50% time. 11 years, that's a lot of fucking time, man. I would just be more mad at my lawyer, like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Not Christmas. Well, but I mean, crazy. if someone does not want to go to prison, it doesn't matter what give their me, lawyer give, tells just them. Just give me a week. Give me at least a week. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That, like, with Tory Lanez, I'm not saying he didn't deserve what he got or whatever. I don't, I'm not, I don't judge anybody. I just have an opinion. All I'm saying is, damn, could have gave him a couple of days to, like, think shit over <laughs> I mean, That's from, your, from your point of but, view, right? Uh -huh. From your point of view, as mm -hmm. part of a a group of street rappers, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, with you know, you guys were at the very top of the game, right. uh, you know, during certain times. Gunna, before he went in, was considered one of the top rappers definitely, in the for game. Sure, yeah, for sure, Pushing P Gunna, was a yeah. huge song. Yeah, it was a phenomenal, yeah, Gunna whatever. Right, his. Gunna's definitely fire. And, yeah. and these are YSL was a crew of street rap. Oh yeah, they was fire. They had fuck the rats, yeah. fuck snitches. You know, yeah. we're really out here. Do you feel that after that video has now come out, that Gunna can get back to the height that he was at before? I think it's going to be hard because mm. the streets are so judgmental. The internet is such judgmental. They don't have no mercy. They have no compassion. The internet has no compassion for you. They don't give a fuck. You could be on top. Once you fall on your face, they'll enjoy it. Like, you, cause they go, cause a lot of people look at it like this. A lot of people don't have. There's more people that don't have that do have, right? Yeah. So if you're in a position where you're making millions, the motherfucker that don't have is like, that stupid nigga or that stupid bitch, I could have been in that position. I wouldn't have fucked my money up like that. Cause me being around a nigga like 50, if some a situation would have happened, yo, yeah, yo, shot a girl in the foot. Man, that nigga's stupid. Hmm. He'll help you with your lawyer money, but in his back of his mind, that nigga's kind of dumb for even putting himself in a situation. Because when you come from nothing, you appreciate what you got. Wrong or right, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so when you look at Tory's situation, if, if he didn't do it, he got found guilty of doing it, right? Yeah. And now he's facing mad time, potentially. That's kind of fucked up, but that's what happens when dumb shit happens. Or you do dumb shit. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. So you got to always think nobody's exempt from jail, bro. Because your freedom is worth more than any kind of, any dollar in any world. There's motherfuckers in jail that wish they could be in a Tory Lane's position. Could be, oh shit, I'm hanging with Megan and Kylie Jenner and them. You're going to be like, yo, how does a night, that's the night of your life. You at Kylie Jenner house. How that shit turn into a shootout, bro? Because people dream of them nights. There's people though, that that would love to be in the position you are and 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 would appreciate that shit. Yeah, I mean I, I did wild shit before, but I realized, yo, bro, I beat the odds. Yeah. We had beef with a lot of niggas, went through a lot of shootouts, niggas trying to kill you, money on your head. I beat the odds and I thank God every day, like, oh shit. Beat the odds. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I had TK Kirkland on my show the other day, and he basically broke it down. He said that Tory was just not enough of a player to pull off sleeping with two girls and having them both in the same room with each other and then trying to holler at a third girl and then everyone's drunk, pissed off. Like, he just wasn't that dude to try to handle that. Tory's not smooth enough to handle two women like that. He just happened to be him. He got lucked up was fucking Megan, fucking Kelly. He thought he was on some player shit. Then you go to another event and mess with somebody else. All those rules are bad. Yeah, he's five foot two. Five foot two, all those rules are bad. One, you don't bring two women that you're fucking in the same room together unless there's an understanding right. that both of y'all fucking. But I mean, like, you know, money and power, when you were a superstar, like when we first came out, I thought, I remember, I remember when uh, all the Jimmy Henchman shit was going on, and and one of the hip hop police said to me, "You think you unstoppable? You think you in instructable?" And I really did. 
I didn't give a fuck. I had money. I had bulletproof cars. I had beautiful women. I flew the world. My whole life changed, came out of prison. Lived in Battery Park, had houses, condos. Sometimes power gets to your head. I admit it. It gets yeah. to your head. You take a motherfucker off the street, right? You ask one of these drill niggas, yo, what's the first thing you're going to do in your money? You know what I mean? They're not they're going to say, man, I'm going to invest in the block. I'm not going to invest in real estate. Mm. When And then once they invest in the block with a million dollars, the Rico, the feds, wait, watching them. Oh, we know what he did. Yeah. Boys crew guns and fucking work. That's why the smartest thing 50 ever said, just like the mafia, you deal drugs, stay away from me. No hmm. drugs. You can't be in this business, be a rapper, make hundreds of thousands, flip that and buy bricks and don't think you're not going to be on the fucking radar, bro. Somebody's going to say something. You're going to, you got to really use your brain in this shit. The street shit, once you get to a certain level, the street shit is out the window, bro. If you look at all the cases that you've faced over the years, how much money was spent on lawyers for you? Not to say that you paid it, because I know 50, you know um, what I mean, helps pay for shit and so forth. Lawyer fees was crazy, Like, man. if you were I to mean, count it all up, I mean, all together. I mean, look, when you look at lawyers like uh, Scott Lehman, uh, right. Don Florio. The, the top lawyers in yeah, New York. Lo yeah. lo let's look at the ones that are, that stay consistent. Hot. Don Florio, Scott Lehman. Uh, I got, uh, it's different lawyers for different things. Like, I would tell you, all right, Scott Lehman is federal. Or he could be state. Dawn Florio is state. She beat a lot of big cases out here with a lot of the young boys. She's very popular. Just beat Zay Obama shit, I believe. Mm. Then you got like a, a Long Island, you got a Bob Macedonia. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me think. Uh, parole, we had Edward Hammond for parole. Because you know, like how Chef G, Free Chef and Sleepy, I was telling White, like he need to get a lawyer like that that used to be the head of the parole board to try to get them out because they don't want to work. let them out on work release. You know what I'm saying? When they could, they have jobs. They have, stay out of trouble, stay in the studio and make money. They should be able to get out and work release. But there's different lawyers for different things. Like if you catch a body, you would call Steve Murphy. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's you can't get, a, a, have a homicide and call a, 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 a just like a, a, not a homicide lawyer. You can't get, you parole, you need a parole lawyer. It's a Fed case, you need a Fed lawyer. So it's, it's just different. But when you look at cases like Tory, he probably spent a quarter million on that, right? And probably thought he wasn't going to beat it for the money he spent. But sometimes your money don't mean shit. I'm going to keep it real. So, you know, if if he supposedly tried to pay him off a million or whatever it is, you know what I mean? You better off trying to pay the jury, which is impossible to happen, right? right? Like the movies. Yeah. But when you spend a quarter million and they say guilty before Christmas... I know he wanted to put that lawyer in the headlock because Scott Lehman would have told me or Don Flurry, like, yo, you know what? I think you're going to blow. So let's just take this cop out. I'll get you a little five years. You do two, three out that. You might get deported. Can't come to America. But, yo, you're going to do the other years on probation. You might do a year and a half because it's not an attempt murder. It's not above the waist. Mm -hmm. So the cop out on that, you would have did time for the gun and, you know, the deadly assault with the weapon. You probably would have got five for that. But now that you blew trail, even though you don't got a record like that, bro, we could you could look up the maximum on, on, on the charges. If you look up the maximum, I can you you got the research. No, you I mean, look up the maximum. He's facing 23 years. It's a 22 years, eight months on, on a maximum. It's up to the trial. And, and listen, at the end of the day, the judge is going to decide. Because when you blow trail, yeah. you, you you waste the state money. A lot mm -hmm. of niggas don't understand the system. A lot of niggas just go outside and put in work. A lot of young niggas don't understand that. Niggas will go out there, buy hammers, switches on it, and they don't even have the lawyer money if they get caught up. Now you go on a trial with a legal aid. You fucked. So how mm -hmm. much have you spent on legal fees? If you were to add it all up. Who, me? Ballpark. Over a hundred. Over a hundred thousand. Yeah, probably like probably over two hundred. Over two hundred thousand. Yeah, different because my shit was different shit. I didn't have like a big case like Tory. I had, you know, I had bail jumping, uh I think we used Mark Gann in um Queens. So I had bail jumping, I had uh what I had, I had the gun charge, I had uh the Fed case, the Fed with the passport fraud. It was just different cases that added up to money, you know? But half of the time, I'm going to be honest, 50 took care of that shit. Like, right. I never really, you know what I'm saying? Like, when niggas call cases, banks, me, fucking anybody.
So if you didn't have that 200,000 for the top-notch lawyers, you would have sat in jail way longer. Yeah, a lot of shit would have happened. Like, like with Edwin Hammond, I wouldn't have been able to go on tour. That's what I was saying with Chef and Sleepy Hollow, because they got skid bids. You know what I mean? If they get a certain kind of parole lawyer, maybe it could happen. And with him, was the head of the parole board, so he knew what to say to get me the passes. So I got to go on anger management. I was on parole. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yo, all right, I know the parole board. Do, do, let's talk to the people, because this is your way of income. Boom. Well, uh, T.I., a new video came out where he talked about telling on his dead cousin over a gun charge. And I remember last time we talked about Terrence Gangster Williams telling on his dead friends, and you were like, well, did he tell on a ghost or did he tell on a person? To me, it sounds like he told on a ghost. So here we go again, T.I. told on a ghost. Yeah, definitely. He, he, he told on a ghost, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, there's nobody. I, is you really telling us because this guy is dead? So maybe the feds know that too and just want to play the game with you because the feds are like, they, they, they're the biggest gang out here. Mm. Like, the feds will, you know, They'll, they'll get into your mind. They got all kind of mind control and all kind of shit that nigga will tell, and then they'll expose you to the public. Hmm. Like, for that gunner shit, we don't know. That could have been the police recording him just to, you know what I mean, hurt his career a little bit because this shit is based on street credibility. Like, this is like the, all these guys, all these rappers, we do come from the streets. From the streets. Like a lot of dudes, like it's, it's a lot of dudes that come from the streets. The Kodaks, the Dirks, the NBA Young Boys, all these niggas are from the streets, bro. So now you got just got a street nigga with money. The decisions he decided to make is on him. Hope he makes smart decisions because you're walking on eggshells when you got that kind of money and you're a street nigga. You always walking on eggshells, but Fed's gonna be watching, bro. Come on. We got cameras everywhere. So what do the Feds do now? When you go to Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, any borough of New York, the feds let niggas kill each other. Boom, all right, they want to kill each other. Cool, we'll catch up with them later. We get the cameras, all the information, and then they come with the Rico case later and hit them with natural life and all that. You know, uh, Hip Hop Homicides, mm -hmm. which is a new series, which 50 is one of the executive producers of. Right. Uh, Van Lathan is actually the host. Right. And I had him come in and we did an interview. And, you know. Shout out to Van Lathan. Yeah, shout out to Van Lathan. That's the homie right there. And, uh, you know, a lot of these Remember cases... Remember when he screamed on Kanye? That shit was crazy. <laughs> I know, right? He went um, in on Kanye for... Huh? Well, uh, a lot of the people in Hip Hop Homicides, I've actually interviewed myself. Right. Or have had some sort of communication with. Like me and Pop Smoke, we mm -hmm. talked a week before yeah, he got Yeah, catch killed. Hip Hop Homicides, catch BMF, catch yep. Welcome to the Culture, Passport String coming soon. Mm -hmm. You know I got to promote when I'm on Vlad shit. Yep. That's what we do. Well, I asked Van. I said, what was the biggest surprise that you learned from doing hip hop homicides. Right. And he said, by far the biggest thing that got to him was how many rappers get killed because of the internet. I really didn't realize how much we were gonna be talking about tweets, how much we were gonna be talking about people that, that, that dropped their location, how much we, we were gonna be talking about people who said this to this person or who did this to this person, or then they have to go back and forth. How many of these beefs are taking place digitally. How many of these things are really not even things that exist? This ain't got nothing to do with no records. It really don't. Putting yo, all this shit together. Yo, everybody go through it, yep. Everybody know, they, they know every bit of information on you. And it's yep. like the internet has no mercy. They don't care. Yep. So for as an artist, you you know, you got to put yourself out on, on flyers events, you letting people know where you at, you know, and if you're not a, a, a 50 cent of future and all that, you might not have the security and be rolling as deep as as you are, or you know what I'm saying? You might not have the resources to move the way safely. So, you know, being an artist, you a target. You got to move accordingly, bro. Because people don't give a fuck. Yeah. They used to love rappers. We loved Biggie. We loved Pac back in the day. We loved rappers. Now it's like, what? Rob that nigga. You know? Yeah. I mean, look, I interviewed FBG Duck twice. Both interviews, I am telling him to his face, you need to, to move out Chicago, of Chicago. Chicago. You've of gotten course. shot. Your brother just but got then when killed. He, but then when he do that, what are they going to say? He's losing street credibility. Right. He left Chicago. Yeah. And, but and when you look at Dirk and Chief, they good. Because that's what I would have did. I would have left Chicago. They're out. Like, yeah. it's, it's a war zone. But yeah. 
when you tell motherfuckers to leave their hood, oh, he left the hood, he's not around, it's like, it's a catch-22. Because motherfuckers will tell you, look at Freaky Todd. Freaky Todd was my first example, I always tell you. He came to the hood, took motherfuckers off the, the, the dollar van, motherfuckers had fucked up shoes, lost boy niggas, throw 20 of them niggas in the dollar van, take them all the way to Jamaica Avenue, take the dollar van back. They coming back with two, three pairs of sneakers. He loved the hood, but where did he die at? In the hood. Every rapper, where you die at? In the hood. 50, he almost got his dad shot nine times in the hood. Yeah. Come on, bro. It'll yeah. be a stranger to love you more than your own best friend. Well, yeah. And I remember you, know you, what I'm saying? you talked I got, about like, Listen, I go through that. I got friends that I knew for years. I love. I did. So I flew them around the world. Um, they, they've been in mansions, condos, you know, threw parties for them, gave them money, borrowed my cars, crashed vehicles, all kinds of things, right? But when it slowed up, they disappeared. When it was G-Unit to G-Unit, they disappeared. People switch up. It's, you just you just learn to live in situations. You think people are really your friends. You get them money. You get them deals. They don't they don't care. Nobody cares. It's all about me, me, me. We in a in a me, me, me generation. It's all about me, especially with the internet. So yeah, the internet is the battery on on everybody's back. But the internet is making you money. The internet is making people look good. The internet is giving people fa um validation. I'm addicted to the internet too. I'm not gonna sit here and say I don't watch the internet as much as I watch TV. I like the shit that's on the internet. I'm like that kids could make money off YouTube. I like people could make money off uh, uh, drop shipping. It's just a new world we live in. Okay, look at the number one YouTuber. What's the kid name? Kai, what's the young boy Mr. Name? Beast. Huh? Mr. Beast is the number one YouTuber. But uh, who's the other kid? The young uh, Kai, kid? Kai, Kai Kanat, so something like that. Look at him, but he got number one Twitch award or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Okay, like this is going to a whole nother level. Look at the level you're on, as well as Drink Champs is Math high for now, yeah. you know, um, Gilly the Kid, like, and, and it's my lane. I feel like I'm going to have one of the best podcasts in the world when I come to my yeah. I already know. And I got Welcome to the Coach out now that I'm just, it's a learning experience for me. I'm learning from you. I'm learning from watching Gilly. I'm learning from Hoffa. Watching everybody. I'm learning. So it's a learning process for me. But Welcome to the Coach is definitely dope. We, 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 we got a lot of subscribers coming in. We need more. Thank you, Vlad. Don't edit that. Because you know <laughs> Vlad edits shit. You know, I mean, you talk about, I think it was on This Is 50, you're talking about how when you go to Chicago, you're staying at the nice hotels. Yeah, so you're flying, one. you know, you're, you're you're shopping in the nice areas and so yeah, forth. Yeah. But look what happened to FBG Duck. But that was a he once. He was on the Gold Coast. But look, that he was. He was on the Rodeo Drive but, of Chicago. But look, that was a once in a lifetime thing. That's why the feds was on that case so fast. Mm. That's like shooting somebody in Manhattan. It's different than shooting somebody in Manhattan than shooting somebody in, in you shoot somebody Times Square, you know. Yeah, it's over. They're gonna be on you. You it's gonna be you're gonna do mega time and it's they're gonna be on you. It's not it's different than shooting somebody where where society doesn't care. Yeah. Where it's everyday shit. Yeah, I mean free So he shot him. Look, they shot him. They had the Rico, they, it was the feds, right? It turned yeah. into a federal case. I think so. I'm not sure. Come on, bro. Chicago's a nice place, bro. Let's not make it seem like Chicago is just it's fucked up in one area. Like how everywhere is it's fucked up in one area. New York just has different areas. When I look at Chicago, it's fucked up in one area. Niggas is killing each other. But they don't, they're not gonna show you condos. They the condos by the water? And in the Waldorf Astoria and and where FBG with that shopping area, that shit is nice. That shit don't happen like that, bro. In the suburbs of Chicago, too? Yeah. Come on, bro. I mean, look, I mean, free tax stone, that's my friend. You know, but unfortunately that incident happened in Manhattan, and this is why it's such a big deal. Tax stone. You know? It's the situation is fucked up because it, it it's from the fucking internet. It's from some some dumb shit, and I don't want to talk about it because like it's an open case. Yeah. I wonder when that shit trial will start because it's like it's been five years. Shit, it's been five years. I remember Tax sent me this this video he did right at Rock Nation uh, with Jay Z, and Jay Z has a skin fade. <laughs> now Jay Z has dreads to his shoulders. That's how long. Tax Stone, who's my friend, right? Has no, been it was it, it was it was a sad situation because I, I I love Tax Stone, yeah. You know, and I did and we did music. I did a song with Troy Ave before, and you know his bodyguard. Whatever happened to him? You know, I don't want to talk on the case. It's just a sad situation. You know what I'm saying? It's just the whole shit, and you know, one nigga's in jail and one nigga, you know. So it's just a crazy situation, but you know, shit happens in the streets in the industry. You know, and hopefully we could figure it out. Like, I never had no, no, because I know when I have my beefs, like, I know when this shit, 
You know, you know what I want to ask you? In hip hop, you know, we always say, yo, you gotta, you, 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 we don't choose a side. Like I never choose a side. You never learn. In the 48 Laws of Power, say never choose a side with that, right? So, but in hip hop, we actually choose sides. You have to. Yeah, even as the media, you sometimes yeah, have you to. You kind of yeah. have to yeah. choose sides. Yeah. And I think that's what fucks up a lot of relationships. Because if I have a beef with a nigga, like I used to be like, yo, oh, you fuck with that nigga? Fuck that nigga. But after a while, I was like, it's the industry. Everybody kind of fucks with each other. Or you, ah, oh, fuck with this nigga, fuck with this nigga. I'm just not that type of nigga. Like, even if, like I said, if I didn't talk to 50, you ain't going to see me with any of his enemies, Irv Gotti or somebody eating breakfast. It's one of them niggas like, nah, that ain't me. Oh, yeah, and, 50, and murder shit on him in that wrap up. Irv, get ready for that. <laughs> and by I the way, free, gonna... free Rod Diggs. Free Rod free Diggs, Rod man. Diggs. Yeah, yeah. I told you one time I was in um, Switzerland. Why you say that? Well, because I seen some interviews about how you you heard Rod Diggs and um, oh yeah, we was in Switzerland. Yeah, and overseas. I heard Rod Diggs and 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 um yeah, because you know Murder has a nice following overseas. Yeah, and as well as a lot of artists. And you know, one day we was in front of a, a nice hotel and a car pull up, and it was some white boy and he was playing Rod Diggs and uh, uh um and um and Murder. Mm -hmm. And it, you know what's the interesting thing about thing about overseas like. It'd be Caucasian people, Asian people, you know, people of all kind of races that really know their hip hop. Like, I done met white boys overseas and they talk about Daz Effects and J. Ruder Damager and KRS One. They know their hip hop because, you know, the younger generation, it feels like sometimes we're trying to forget the legends. Like, sometimes, you know, when they say, oh, these niggas washed up or whatever, but the legends that paved the way, like, you always got to kind of salute them. So out overseas, that's why I love overseas, because they really love hip hop. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what we started off doing. Like we love hip hop, being in the basement, listening to records and shit like that. One of my uh YouTube members, um, his name is Alan Self. Mm -hmm. He actually sent me a video mm -hmm. that had well, you were you and 50 and Buster Rhymes were in the club together. And he challenged you and 50 to a versus against him and Spliff Stark. Uh, it wasn't, I, I don't feel like it was a challenge. I, you know, Fifth told him, yeah, I could do this shit better than you. No, you saying, yo. I'm spitting buster shit. Niggas just fucking around. But I mean, I think 50's on a level where he'll never do a versus, bro. He's not interested in certain things like that. Like, I, I just think, you know, that guy sold a lot of records. He gets a lot, a lot of money. And not saying that anything is wrong with versus, I just think he's not interested in doing it. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think he's gonna ever do it. I, I don't think, think a lot a reason, of artists. Yeah, there's a reason for him to do it. It's a dope thing, but what was the last dope versus? That was Bone Thug and who was the last one? Was mm, I think uh, Dipset and uh, the Locks. Yeah, I was, think was versus was more of a thing like when we was in the house for COVID. Yeah, like because we couldn't go outside, we was quarantined. It's still dope, you know. Shout out to Swiss and Timberland, you know what they did, and they make money and you know created a big company. So salute to them, like they get money, so. I can't knock them. But what I'm saying is when we was inside the house of COVID, a lot of things like OnlyFans and uh, uh, Versus, I think it was more like a little more interesting because you were stuck in the house. Yeah. It still is interesting. Like I would check out a dope Versus. I just don't think 50 or Bevy be interested in it. Well, I think that if it was an actual Versus between, you know, 50 and Buster, I, I think 50 would get it. Just because I think 50 has bigger songs. Right. You know Buster, what I'm saying? Buster got hits too. They, yeah, they, he know Buster has a, a huge amount of hits, but Buster's Buster. never gone diamond. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know it's, what I'm saying? I think Buster's a great entertainer. I think entertainment wise, a live show, Buster, I'd probably give the edge to like Buster. When you, look, so, when you look at the first weeks of hip hop before before the streams, what was the biggest week? Wasn't it Eminem? Yeah. And I always have this Eminem argument. People are like I don't they sleep on Eminem, but he's doing what six point two billion on Spotify still. Uh, we had Eminem, you had, no matter if it was Snoop, M, 50, and maybe the Kanye and um, 50 week. Those were like the three biggest weeks, first week. Yeah. Remember 50 did what, a million on Get Rich or Die Train, right? Mm -hmm. M did a million on his on his album, right? Snoop did a million his first week. On, how, how many artists did a million their first week? Look it up. Cause I'm artists or rappers? Rappers. Who sold... A million their first million week. First week. Did Lil Wayne do it? Lil Wayne possibly did it, but I know it was Snoop, Eminem, 
I think it was Snoop, Eminem. Here we go. I got it. Eminem, 1.78 million for uh, MMLP. Well, what is that? Let me see. The Mar- Marshall Mathers LP. Yeah, there we Marshall go. Mathers there LP. we go. Yeah, I'm bugging. I'm high right now. <laughs> and then Eminem is also number two, 1.32, 1.32 million for TES. Okay. What is that? Hold on a second. Eminem, TES. The Eminem show. Yeah, the Eminem show. Okay, there we go. So the Marshall Mathers, Ma- the Marshall Mathers LP, one point seven eight million first Big week. Big boy numbers. The Eminem show, one point three two million first week. Big boy numbers. Fifty Cent number three, one point one four million for the massacre. Big boy numbers. What about you? Although it said four days, meaning that he didn't get the full week. Okay. So, mm. what about so, what about Give Richard Dodd trying? Drake views one point oh four million. Lil Wayne Carter three, one point oh one million. Get Rich or Die Trying. What about Snoop? Let's Snoop should have been on that list too, no? Uh, let's see. Because Snoop did a million this week. Because I remember it was the first one was, was Snoop, Drake. I mean, M, 50, and Snoop. Get Rich or Die Trying did 872,000 copies this first week. Still huge numbers. We give it a mil. <laughs> Round it up. Just Round it up. Mil. What about Snoop? Which one, Doggy Style? I think Doggy Style did like a mill the first week, or close to it. 806,000. Come on, bro. Big boy Those numbers. Those are active. Big boy numbers, bro. Yeah. Come on, bro. How, how was it when, uh, remember, because Kanye and 50 were going, you know, even like Rolling Stone did like, like a face-to-face cover. I was, I was, was there for that. That was a very yeah. interesting shoot. It was crazy because 50 had his barber, light the barber, shout the light. Mm-hmm. And, um... Kanye, Kanye had his barber, and his barber came in. He had the Louis Vuitton cape. This when he was the Louis Vuitton don. Mm-hmm. And Fifty was like, "I gotta get you some new shit," because you know he had the regular apron. <laughs> but his his fucking barber had the Louis Vuitton clippers. The shit, it was just funny. It was it was a good week because what Fifty did eight hundred and change, and what what Kanye do nine hundred and change, something like that. Yeah, he Come he on, edged him out a little bit. But at the end of the day, two big artists ended up doing huge numbers. Everyone won. I mean, everybody wanted to take a shot at 50. 50 was the number one. You know, even Jay-Z talked about it when 50 came through and, you know, crushed the buildings. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, to sell $1.4 million on the massacre, and that was the second album. And Get Rich or Die Trying, you could say did a mill because it did eight and change. Like, yeah. those are at big boy numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's astronomical numbers, bro. What, wasn't Kanye coming to the studio? Like early on? Yeah, I've been in the studio with Kanye a couple of times. Like, I remember him coming to Dre's studio because everybody used to come to Dre's studio. That was, see, that's why I'm so appreciative because those experiences for me, I would never forget. Forget the cars, forget the, to be in the studio with Dr. Dre and Eminem, like, that was my dream. I remember Fifth calling me, smoking Guido, and Dre is playing fucking in the club beats. He's playing, get, um, um, this. I can't, if I can't do it. And I'm like, oh, I'm in the studio. Hearing this shit before it's late. And I'm like, man, this dude is the best producer in the world. I feel like if Dre started to really, you know, drop shit, there's a void in, in good production. But you got, you know, you got the Metro Boomins and all these new dudes from Atlanta that is on fire right now. Those are the guys. But Dre, I could just imagine what he got in there. Scott Storch, like, because, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Swiss, like, yeah. you know, we kind of came up on those producers. Now the kids are coming up on the Metro Boomins and... All the new guy, new guys that's you know that's fire, but Dre being in the studio with him at that time, what? And we New York niggas, so I'm like, this is a dream come true. I'm smoking L.A. weed, never left the hood, you know what I'm saying? Never left one three four and got brewer. I'm in L.A. smoking that good weed. Dre is playing beats. We on. I'm like, damn, this is my dream come true. That's why I'm so humble because my dreams came true, bro. I might not have as much cars as chains and bitches and rappers as any other rappers. It's not about that. It's about the experience, man. You know what I'm saying? The experience in the studio. Then we in the studio in Detroit. It's cold as a bitch. We out there with Eminem. That shit's crazy. That shit's fucking Eminem. This dude just sold 16 million records. Uh, you were in the studio when Eminem was recording? Yeah, we was in the studio with M. We 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 were used to go to L.A. with Dre. And then and then we used to go mess with him. You know, shout to Tracy, Paul Rosenberg. They all treated us like family over there. What oh. was it about Eminem in the booth 
that's different from other rappers. I think, I think what Eminem that makes him astronomical is when we was doing Many Men and he was doing production with Many Men because he does a lot of production on a lot of stuff from Get Rich or Die Trying. And it was the footsteps and the shots. And he was like, the footsteps came from Poltergeist. It was crazy. I done seen him rhyme backwards, rhyming Pig Latin. So, you know, just like Nas. Like, he's as lyrical as Nas. And then a lot of people say, well, I don't hear him in a club. And nah, it's not about that. I don't hear him in the car. Nah, it's not about that. It's that right now, Eminem could sell out a stadium with no problem. Eminem, what did we say the Spotify numbers was? Well, I looked it what up. Was the Spotify on, on Spotify, numbers? he has 62 million monthly listeners. Okay. And what is he? So 60, we could do the 62 million monthly listeners? Yeah. Big monthly. boy numbers. Yeah. Still, and Eminem don't come outside and, you know, a lot of people can't relate to him. But as for me, what he did for me and what I seen he did for 50 and, and Banks and G-Unit as a whole and um, D12 and OB Trice, everybody went platinum and gold, getting cosigns from him. We had the overseas connection because it wasn't really just Interscope. Interscope was a part of it, Jimmy Iovine, but Eminem is a machine in his whole. Like he might not come outside and relate to other shit that people want to see him, but still, bro, look look what he did with Griselda. Yeah. Because when you look at Griselda, not saying they're not dope MCs. West Side Gun is fire. Benny, everybody's fire. Conway, they fire. But that Eminem cosign. Oh, yeah. He, when you look at Joe Buttons and Slaughterhouse, like that Eminem cosign yeah. is, is, is a different kind of cosign. No, I mean, I've said that to Conway. Like, I remember right. I interviewed Conway twice. And I'm like, look, like, I'm a hip hop guy. Like, right. you know, I do hip hop. You would have never, there wouldn't have been no serial video game socks. Shirts selling millions. If if Eminem co-signed, it would have been totally different. We yeah. would have blew, but we wouldn't have sold and did what we did and did as much without that Eminem and Dr. Dre co-signed. Come yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, listen, when I interviewed Conway, I told him flat out, I said, listen, I'm a hip-hop dude. Like, I follow, I know underground hip-hop and so forth. I had never heard of Griselda until the Eminem co-signed. Right. And he was like, I know. Me, as who's probably more into hip-hop than the average hip-hop fan, just because it's my job, wasn't aware of what was happening in Buffalo. But then mm -hmm. when Eminem posted up the picture with y'all, I'm yeah. like, oh, let me let me check these dudes out. And right. it's like, oh shit, this is right. dope. Like <laughs> it's probably like I mean? that so, for a lot of people. Yeah. Right. And that's okay. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, that's yeah. okay. Like it's it's artists that I wasn't aware of until I seen, you know, somebody post them or something like that. So it's like, you know, it's okay. You know what I mean? It's all good. And like I said, man, we and I'm speaking, I can speak for Wes too. Like we super appreciative and, and grateful for for all of the opportunities and just for them even fucking with some kids from Buffalo, man. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he didn't he wasn't right, trying to downplay right, that shit. Nah, like Griselda's yeah, dope. Like Griselda's one of the dopest groups out there, but that Eminem co sign made gave him a worldwide yeah. stamp. Like they might not be playing a land in over here, but they might be playing fucking uh in, in overseas somewhere. You know, one of my members, uh, Lazy Bone Two One Six, not the actual Lazy Bone, okay. just someone who named himself. All right, he pointed out that at one point, Soldier Slim was potentially going to get signed to G Unit. I think there was something when I got locked up because remember we wanted there was so many people we were supposed to sign. Yeah, like uh, we were supposed to sign Keisha Cole. Mm. I like I would I would have loved Keisha Cole. I liked Olivia too, but Keisha Cole. I, I remember they were saying uh, potentially. I don't know. That was just something I heard. Um, Fab wanted to sign. Fabulous. Like, yeah, oh, Fab okay. wanted to sign the G unit. Huh. Like, everybody kind of wanted to sign with us at that point. We was the hottest shit out. And that's how it usually works. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm going to bring up an interesting story. I'm not sure you were there, yeah. but this was actually written about in Prodigy's book. Okay. A situation happened in Connecticut with Mob Deep and G unit before Mob Deep signed to G unit. Okay. Were you there? Um. Yeah, let me know what happened. Okay. A big fight broke out. So according to Prodigy's book, something happened between Mob Deep and 50 Security. Uh, a guy named uh, Goran. You know what I'm talking about? Is there, was this at a party with a whole bunch of strippers? I'm not sure. But basically, a, a huge fight broke out. Someone got stabbed, and I heard it was a friendly stabbing. Like, like so many people are getting stabbed that someone accidentally stabbed one of their own people. Um, basically, Prodigy described the G-Unit entourage like hyenas, <laughs> the way that people just sort of mobbed. 
Now, I'm not saying this to start off any new beef because clearly Mob Deep signed a G Unit and it all got squashed yeah, definitely. afterwards. No, I believe you because you know Mob Deep, like, yo, they had a lot of fights. Like, you know, they used to hang with the E Money bags and, and the mm. Sherm the Worms and, and the crazy motherfuckers. Shout out to Rest in Peace the Prodigy. Like, they had fights, you know, they hang with super gangsters, like E Money bags, the Sherm the Worms. Like, Prodigy was with a lot of gangsters, like his whole career going into the 90s, them going fights at the tunnel. I remember they fought the Lost Boys, mad niggas from my block. Really? Yeah. M- Mob Deep and the Lost, Lost Boys, Boys got into yeah, it. Yeah, huh. Mob Deep and the Lost Boys. I remember I was on the block because, you know, I, I used to like to stay on the block when everybody leaves so I can get all the money. So I stayed on the block and Lost Boys was going all out and they had a show and uh, my homie Sunshine was there, J-Ball. You know, some of them Lost Boy niggas knew karate. Like J-Ball or oh, karate kick you in your face. Shout to J-Ball. You know, <laughs> shout to Freaky Ty's son. <laughs> you know, and they niggas came back. They motherfuckers had blood like on. My man had one of them designer belts. That shit had like blood on it and shit. And they'll fight. They said they had a fight with Mob Deep. Because, you know, in the 90s, it, it was, you know, it had guns, but it was a lot of brawling. Now, motherfucking, there's no fighting. Yeah. So you remember that fight in Connecticut? I don't remember that one. I, 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 I probably, were you there? Or were you locked up? It was up in a club time? or not at the house? That was at the club. It had to be in a club. I wasn't there for that. You I probably there. was locked up for that. Okay, you heard about it though. I probably heard about it. I just, I'm you just refreshing my mind. It just kind of shows the growth where you can get into this huge entre, you know, uh, altercation with a crew, and then later on, be cool later. Be, be cool, cool later. Sign, as make money as, together. As long as nobody gets smoked, it's all good, I guess, right? Yeah. So, I mean, what do you think of? Uh, NBA Young Boy and uh, Fredo Bang finally squashed their I beef. mean, what they? How much money they gave NBA Young Boy? What they gave him? Eighty hundred million? Hundred million? They well, gave... uh, who, whoever, not not Fredo Bang. But Yo, like listen, whoever... listen, listen. Shout to NBA Young Boy. You give me a hundred million, I'm gonna say stop the violence too. Because <laughs> now he on a whole another tax bracket. You know what I mean? So it's like congratulations to him because he's one of the top dogs out here. So I mean, like I said, you give me a hundred million, stop the violence, baby. You know, stop the violence. Because now the people are watching you wanting to take that money from you. So stop the violence, man. I mean, when you look at like an NBA young boy, the level of success, Mm -hmm. but also the level of bullshit and everything else, does it remind you of G-Unit a little bit? Of course. It reminds me of a 50 Cent. It reminds me of a Pac. I mean, we all go through it. Yeah. Because, you know, once you get to a certain level, what you got? You got haters, motherfuckers that don't like you. Motherfuckers. It's all a competition in the music business. But, you know, he made it. And like I said, 100 million, stop the violence. You got mansions. He got mad cars. He's living a life. He can have as much kids as he wants to because he got millions of dollars. He do what he wants. He's living a life. Salute to him. I'm not a hater. I love these young niggas getting to the money because I feel like they get more money than we did. You know? You know? They get more money than we did. And it's cool. I'm happy for them. I'm around the, the A-boogies and these dudes. And I'm seeing them and, and they in the city. And, you know, they got the foreigns and they fucking shit up. And, you salute to the young niggas. You can't be a hater. That's one thing I never been. So young, older, more money, less money. I never count nobody's money, just mine's. You know, so I never been a fucking hater. But I love what these young boys are doing. They get money, man. They get to feed their family. But you know, a lot of shit come with that shit. You a target now, stick up kids, all that. You know, but you got to move right. NBA young boy's in a position where he, I think he knows his level now. He got $100 million, bro. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> I mean, you talked about how you guys move. Like, for example, right. you said that when you go to Rodeo Drive, you have people watching you and everything else like that. Yeah. No, Rodeo Drive, I said people will watch you. Huh. So you'll be shopping with your girlfriend and you might be in a store and you might send, spend 10, 20,000. Sometimes the, the, the gang niggas, they'll send scouts out to watch you on Rodeo. Because yeah. I have friends in L.A. and they'll tell me, you be careful because... You know, they send scouts out to watch people. Yeah. So if you spending, Vlad is in there, you spending 20000 you buying this, and you're, somebody might be in there watching you, and that's how they trail the cars. That's what I tell you. You never know what I'm going to be in. I could be in a, a Maybach. I could be in a Rad 4. I could be in, in some bucket shit because really the people will identify you from your car. Yeah, I mean, you actually pulled up. Mm-hmm. In Calabasas, when we met up out yeah, there, in, in some some yep. you know some real basic shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the hoopty. Yep, because that gets me less attention out. Mm-hmm. What's the last rapper that got on um, shot at in a big phantom? What's his name from Atlanta? He got shot at in L.A. You can look it up. I forgot his name. 
You know I mean, shout to him, man. He's, he's all right. Rapper but, shot in, but he was in a big He was in a big boy phantom. You know, the one that cost 650 plus taxes, man. You know, even even the street niggas know what that is. Hmm? J Money? That's, yeah. I think but so, look yeah. What, but look what Carl, you know, you in a phantom. That shit have you on a radar. Yeah. I mean, listen. Uh, I mean, you, you made a mention about how if Nipsey Store was on Rodeo Drive, would he have gotten killed? Probably not. Probably not. You think Shitty Cuz is hanging out on Rodeo Drive? No. And you know what you, I mean? And, 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 and then you think about um, Freaky Todd. Like, he was always in the hood. He got killed right in the hood. Yeah. So it's like, yo, bro, you got to... That was the first lesson for me. So, and shout rest in peace to Freaky Todd. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, rest in peace, PNB Rock. Uh, you and I have both said... We both know where that Roscoe's is. Yeah. I'll never Neither be. one of us have ever actually nah. eaten there. For a good reason. Even though both of us have eaten at Roscoe's in yeah, other areas. I probably sat in Roscoe's maybe once or twice in life. And that was the Hollywood one. Yeah. Maybe twice. Which is like in a nice go. residential area. Yeah, it's cool. But Roscoe's yeah. is something you just really eat and go. It ain't really, for me, it's not something that I would, it's not like going to Tao or Philippe's or some shit like that. Right. Like, you know what I mean? It's cool. I ate in there like twice. But when I'm in LA, we always moved around because we always had beef, you know, from back in the Shook days. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like we was down with fucking... P. Diddy or one of these niggas or, or, you know what I'm saying? We was down with 50, so it was always a chance that something could happen or a motherfucker would be like, all right, well, I don't like 50, so I'm going to kill you. Mm. So, you know, I move different. You know, I move different. Rest in peace, Takeoff. He ended up getting killed since our last interview. Right. When you look at that situation, mm -hmm. he's hanging out with a bunch of Houston guys. They're playing dice. Right. Out in the open with, looks like about 100 people around. You know, tempers start to flare. People are talking shit. Right. You know, Quavo said, you know, let me get up out of here before I hurt somebody. Right. And then chaos breaks out. Brother, it's a sad situation, right? It's a very, very sad situation. But and, and I'm from 134 on God Brew. I've seen a lot of dice games get ugly. I okay. Just, so you personally, look, how many people do you know that have gotten killed in dice games? I know a couple. I could say rest in peace, Barry Plato from Brooklyn, 551. You know what I'm saying? I'm tapped in, in the streets for real. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to Barry Plato. Ja, that's 50's right-hand man. I was around. I went to his funeral. So niggas can't say out cap. I've been in Brooklyn, been to Stobville, everywhere. Ja was the first nigga I knew that died from a dice game. Around my way, I seen niggas get cut. I even had a shootout over a dice game. I took a nigga money. He wanted to walk. And, okay, you know let's I mean? talk about the situation. Because because whenever I brought this up, people are like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, Vlad. Dice games don't ain't crazy nah, like that. I got a song called Dice Game Death that I made years ago. Dice Game Death. So tell me about the, the dice game situation that went bad for you. Oh, like we was in a barbershop. I'm rolling dice with a couple of niggas I knew in a barbershop. And my, uh, my man, ha, ha, me and him, sometimes when you roll dice, and you hit a big number, you get excited. So we do the dance, we jumping around. And when you taking the motherfucker's money and you doing this and you dancing, that shit had motherfuckers tight. They was tight. So so they doing the dance. We doing the dance. Motherfuckers felt the way. We take all your rent money, right? And I knew the nigga. It was, we was cool. But I took all his rent money. You know, he, he had a little size of me, no homo. And, like, I took his rent money and he wanted to walk. Usually, like, when somebody asks for a walk, that's kind of like a sign of weakness. Like, yo, get the fuck out of here, bro. You know what I mean? That walk might, you might want to try to like rob me or something like, I give you a walk? What I'm giving you a walk for? Are you going to give me a walk? So like, say well, I well, take- Hold on, what, what, what does a walk mean? A Explain walk me. is like if I take $1,000 from you, yeah. right? I give you, can I get a walk? I, give you, I might give you back 300. Okay. But a lot of times, motherfuckers like, nah, fuck your walk. You want to keep all your money. <laughs> it's gambling. Right, it's your money. You just want it. Yeah, so I didn't give a motherfucker a walk. We had words, you know, guns was drawn, boom, boom, boom. That easy. Okay. And what ultimately happened? C can you say or no? Oh, uh, it wasn't nothing. It was just a friendly shootout. It wasn't nothing serious. It was like... A friendly shootout. Yeah, it was just... <laughs> no, nobody got uh, hit. Yeah, Luckily, yeah. you know, it was These just... These conversations, man. Yeah. It's just a... It never ceased to amaze me. It was a friendly it, shootout. It was just a friendly shootout. And no one got hit. Nobody got hit. Okay, did you and that guy become cool afterwards? Nah, nah. We ain't cool. I know him. We might say what's up in passing, but I don't hang with we hangs with. Nah, we not cool like that. And there you go. Two people who are cool with each other 
someone almost dies over a dice game. Yeah, we wasn't cool like that. I just knew him in past. But you were okay with him. You didn't have beef with him. Yeah, we was him. okay. We was okay. Okay, someone that you were okay with, yeah. someone almost dies over how much money? It was scraps. It was nothing, bro. A couple hundred dollars? It, it was scraps, man. We You look at a lot of shit where we went to war for, me and 50 had this conversation. A lot of shit we went to war for, it was scraps, bro. Yeah. It was nothing, bro. When you look at the money we get now, it was scraps, bro. So yeah. a lot of motherfuckers in jail for like petty shit, petty. Right. Because it could have been like a couple of hundred dollars, maybe four hundred dollars, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean the rumor it, is it definitely that, uh, wasn't no ten thousand and yeah. crazy. No, I mean the rumor over the dice game that Takeoff died in was like Quavo had lost like a hundred thousand or something like that. Like it was it was a bigger amount, but then again to a Quavo, he could stomach that. It's not worth losing his best friend over. You know what I mean? So, allegedly. Had a Alle- allegedly. Alle- well, we allegedly. Don't know, but, but they actually arrested the guy who allegedly shot him, DJ Pat. He was trying to flee the country. Right. The that's time. crazy. Yeah. He had tickets to Mexico and a bunch of cash. He was Googling, you know, am I a suspect in this murder and all this other type of shit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a horrible situation. I did the Migos first interview ever. I did Takeoff's first interview. Nah, ever. rest in peace to Takeoff. But you know, you you know, that's why I don't, I don't like we don't fuck with people. Yeah. Like, like, that's just, you know, it's a terrible situation, whatever happened, you know what I mean? And it's an open case and takeoff is gone and it's supposed to be over a dice game. But at the end of the day, we don't, like, I don't fuck with people. You yourself, right now in 2023, would you ever have a dice game in public with someone? Nah. Under no circumstance? Nah, I'm good. You're good. I, my last dice game was on a jet with 50 in them, on a private jet. Yes. Were we having fun? <laughs> with your friends we, yeah, a couple in of a thousand. closed situation. Yeah, yeah. It, the, the game might get up to like 10, maybe 20,000, but it's not going to go to like 150,000. Because 50 is, you got to remember, 50 is not a big gambler like that. Hmm. 50 is not going to say, yo, I'm going to bet 100,000 or a million on a game. He's not Right. He's not a gambler like that. So being around him, he don't gamble crazy. Hanging around Floyd, you see, oh shit, Mayweather, <laughs> yeah. this motherfucker's the gamble king. Yeah. But 50 was never really into that. So, you know, you hang when you hang around niggas, they really don't gamble like that. Maybe if 50 gamble more, maybe I would gamble more because that's who I'd be around. Murder, he gamble here and there. But, you know, they don't really go too crazy. So we bet a couple of thousand here and there, but nothing's going to 100,000. I don't think 50 is going to look at that as smart. Like, yo, bet 100,000 in the game. Well, you know yeah. what people could do with that 100,000? <clears throat> Yeah, you could man. Go I buy mean, another it's sad. house and property. You could no, no, down. I feel it. I feel it. Like, I mean, I know I wouldn't spend that kind of money. That's just me. I don't care if I had thirty million, hundred million. I don't think I would gamble a hundred thousand just like on a dice game. I really ain't. I, I don't gamble at all. Yeah, like, I mean, I've never really been a big gambler. My my thing is always like, if you walk into a casino and you look around and you say, "All this was made off people losing," right? <laughs> and to me, that's enough. You know, this is why I, I, I invested so heavily in stocks because yeah. it's like... Gambling in the strip club, they could be like like bad habits. Like sometimes I leave the strip club and I'm like, damn, why did I spend that? <laughs> you know what I mean? With nothing to like, show for it. fuck it. I could have just yeah. bought a, 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 a fucking stove or something. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm just into different <laughs> things. Really. I think when you get older, you you diff- into different things. Like we talk about uh what, what, what the wolf, the wolf stove. Yeah. I want to get one. I know it's about five grand. So mm-hmm. if you throw four or five grand in a strip club, I'd be like, damn, I could have bought me a Wolf Soul. If you if you throw 10 grand, I'm like, damn, I could have bought me a Sub-Zero. You know what I'm saying? So like for me, it's different. I'm in a different shit. Well, listen, I have a toilet that costs $5,500 in my house. Okay. It's a total knee arrest. What's you know that? what I'm saying? Well, that's the shit, the computer, the shit. You want? Let me up? tell you something. This is the only toilet mm-hmm. that you could go and take a shit without ever washing your hands afterwards. And here's what do you mean? Why. What the here's fuck why. you mean? Come on. Here, here's why. You walk up to the toilet. The lid opens. You sit down. The seat is already heated. You go and do what you do. You press a button. Heated water sprays you and cleans you all up. You press another button. Pause. Pause. Whatever, man. Go ahead, go ahead, Listen. Go ahead. People stick fucking paper up their ass. I'm go talking ahead, about pause, water, pause, which is way, way more clean, ahead, right? Then you press another button and hot air dries, dries you out. Right. You stand up and you walk away. You've never touched anything with your hands. Your hands are totally clean. So you actually don't actually have to wipe your hands after taking a shit so you're saying, with this toilet. Pose. You see what I'm saying? You're saying you don't have to wipe your ass? Pose. No, you don't. 
The water does it for I you. I might have to fucking get that. The shit. water does it all for you. And let me tell you, you feel so much cleaner afterwards. Right. Let me put it like this. Take some, take some, some Nutella chocolate and wipe it on your arm. Then take a piece of paper and try to wipe it off. How much of the chocolate will still be on your arm? A lot. Okay. Take that, take that same arm, put chocolate on it, and put it in the shower. Right. Will it be a totally different arm? Yeah, of course, yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're using paper to wipe your ass, you're not going to be as clean as if you use water. Right, right, right. I understand. Five grand. better. Five. Yeah. Drake. Drake sent three of those toilets to DJ Khaled. There's a video where Khaled is like opening the box. And I'm going to check like it that. out, man. I might need one. The Toto Neo Rest. The great... Yeah, Texas. Going to Paris, staying at the La Reserve Hotel, they had them in every room. Right. And I got to try it out. I'm like, oh, this is the best shit I have ever. That's crazy. <laughs> the best shit. Bad. Literally, I've ever so you fucking experienced. Different shit, man. You get, older, you get into you different shit, different, man. Different I mean, shit. That shit that, that's like what a, I'm saying. A dope ass toilet. Well, what do you think about the bishop who was robbed on camera for a million dollars, but now. Is, the bishop that drives the Phantom and all exactly, that? Exactly. That Brooklyn? guy. I think he's crazy. Well, man. he's now, he's been arrested for fraud and extortion. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't try to, like, knock him, but, like, I just think the things that he do is crazy. Like, to ride a Phantom in Brooklyn and top down and big chains on and jury, you making yourself a target, especially with the internet. And my thing is, like, you being a man of God, and no disrespect to him because he, he says he's a man of God and, you know, I think people don't want to see all that shit. They don't care about material shit. We just care. We don't care. We don't want to see a closet. You know, I've seen him show his closet, his gaiters and all like Gucci suits. And it's cool if that's what he want to do. And he feel like God blessed him with, with money. That's cool. But everybody's not going to like that. Because mm -hmm. when, when I go to church, I'm not worried about material things. And I'm saying that God didn't want him to have these things. But now where it leads to, it leads to you get this attention, motherfuckers run up in the church if you wear regular shit and didn't have old jewelry on and big Cubans on, motherfuckers weren't running the church. You know what I'm saying? So that's my, like, sometimes you bring that attention to yourself. And then the fraud thing is more attention. Extortion as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, it's Extortion, the best right now. Fraud, I mean, he did a video saying that he's innocent and he's, you know. No, I hear you, but people, people want to know about the word of God. When they come to your church, I think they're more concerned with the word of God. They're not concerned if somebody got a Gucci suit on or a Cuban chain on, or if his wife got a million in jury. And no disrespect to them. That man, I'm not a hater. Whatever he got, he got. But people are going to judge when they see you do that. That's just point blank, period. You got a drop top phantom and people is donating to your church. I don't, because you don't see, uh, what's my man, TK Kirkland and all. You don't really see them really doing all that flossing and stuff like that. Well, TK is not a preacher, though. I mean, not TK Kirkland. What's my man? T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes. Let's, let's, like, when you see T.D. Jakes, because I then read his book, and I caught, caught some of his um, sermons online and stuff like that. I read his book. But when you see T.D. Jakes, he got a big following, but I don't see him pulling up in phantoms or wearing Gucci suits. Nah. And I'm not saying nothing's wrong with that, because I don't never want to sound like a hater on this internet shit. But if you do that, you're going to get the attention that you deserve. Motherfuckers are hungry out here at the end of the day. So when I run around, I watch my back too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Motherfuckers are hungry. That's it. You still go to church? No, nah, I haven't been to church in a minute, but I got the Bible on my phone. I I, I have, you know, it's been a while for me. Okay. Because so, you're a Catholic, right? Yeah. Which is, uh, that's a real Haitian thing. You know, yeah, most yeah. Haitians are yeah, Catholic? Yeah, yeah, most Haitians are yeah. like Catholic. You know, you have your baptism, your uh, your communion. And your confirmation, it's like Haitian law. Like, a lot of Haitians are Catholic. Shout out to my parents, but yeah, Catholic church, like, my entire life, didn't it? Were your parents, like, super religious? Yeah. So my church father, every like, Sunday? It, it, was, it was a strange dynamic because we was Catholic, and I, I went to um, church, um, Christ the King in Queens, and I went to um, St. Clair's. Those were the churches we went to. Mm -hmm. So I came up being Catholic. Like, my mom's make sure we had our baptism, we had a communion, and your last step is really your confirmation. So I did all that, and then, but the different dynamic is my father was a Mason, too. A Freemason? Yeah, my okay. father was a wishful master Mason. Okay, I, I'm, I I actually got sworn in as a Freemason, but I never did anything past that. Right. So I guess technically I am, but I don't know anything about it. Right, right, right. Well, my father was a wishful master Mason, like he was coming That's on. a high level? Yeah, very okay. high level. We yeah. have the robes, everything, always playing. Uh -huh. All kind of prayers and stuff like that. So I started to learn a little bit of that in some of his books, but I never really 
got into it because I know it's something that's deep, deeper than what, than what you you know yeah. you think. But my father, yeah, rest in peace to him. He was a wishful master mason, like one of the highest levels. Well, when you were in Israel, you actually wore a yarmulke. Yeah. How's that? You know, actually. Getting no, it was into the it whole, was cool because the wailing wall and everything. Yeah, we else went like to that. the I think it's the sixteen churches. And I could say that's one of the, besides, you know, that was one of the best places I went because Jesus got cleansed there. Mm. He got sacrificed there. But then you've seen all kinds of different religions because there was a Jewish side. There was a Muslim side. Mm -hmm. There was a Catholic side. Yeah. So it was something that was one of the best experiences I've had in my life because people don't understand how serious religion is in different places. Like people go to war. People die over religion, religion, religion opinions yeah. and stuff like that. So for us to be in Israel, we went from the Muslim side. Like I said, murder had the Muslim thing on his head. And a guy was like really mad that he had that on his head. Like, Yo, you're going to the Jewish side. You can't do that. So I took mine off. Yeah. And then when you go there, I, you know, I put the yarmulke on my head. I went to the Great Wall. And, and, uh, and Wailing Wall. That's what it, it's the Wailing Wall? Well, the Great Wall is China. Oh, yeah, not the yeah. Great Wall. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Wailing Wall. It's called wall. the Wailing Wall. Or, or the, the, wailing the, West, wall. the Western Wall. The yeah. Western Wall. Yeah. So you don't even know. I always got to do the information. Not the information. <laughs> the Western Wall. But yeah. put the letter in there. I had my yarmulke on. And it, it was an experience, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, Jewish people have always been part of G Unit. You guys call them Jew Unit. Yeah, yeah, the Jew Unit. Yeah. Um, you, you, got, you got Scott Lehman. The lawyer. That's a, a fair lawyer. You had Theo Scott Amaya. You had. Paul Rosenberg, mm -hmm. you know, it's the, Jew, it's the Jew unit. And, you know, I'm used to it. Like I said, I come from, being from mm -hmm. New York and Queens, it's a melting pot of people. You know, we got, what we got? We got Haitian, came up with Trinidadians, a lot of Jamaicans. I came up with Guyanese. I go to school on Jamaica Avenue, a lot of Guyanese. I came up with Italians, a lot of white Italians, Jewish. So I went to school, it was like a melting pot of people, and I feel like that's how New York is. So, like, different religions, sometimes I might read the Quran, I might read some Jewish book, or, you know, I just look into different stuff, like different religions, because I know I'm Catholic, but, you know, everybody believes in something different. Somebody might be a 5 percenter, he might be Muslim, he might be Jewish, and it's cool to be whatever you want to be. It's very interesting. I mean, like, when, when you, you go to Dubai and you see, you know, um, people praying, and mm -hmm. it's the middle of the day, because I feel like Muslim people... They pray the most, it seemed like. Yeah. How many times a day they pray? Like five. Five times a day, yeah. So so you see them stop in traffic. And I always found that that was like interesting. Like in Dubai, like on the side of the road, they, they don't yeah. care. Like it's crazy. No, man. Shout out to to all the Muslim people out there. You know, BG Knockout is a very devout, you know, Muslim. Uh my man Napoleon from the Outlaws, very devout Muslim to the point where he moved to Saudi Arabia. Wow. You know, started a whole new family there, has businesses out there. Everything. Oh, yeah, man. It's dope. I've been to Saudi Arabia, too. It was dope out there. Yeah. They don't play, though, bro. I mean, when you look at what's happening, you know, being that you guys have had, you know, success working with Jewish people and so forth, when right. you see the anti-Semitism that's happening right now with Kanye saying he loves Hitler and everything yeah, else. Yeah, that's like, that. like he was bugged the fuck out. You know, uh, that's what murder was going in on the wrap up on him, kind of, you know, throwing okay. some jabs at him. But um, he was bugging the fuck out. You know, a lot of people would, would love to be in Kanye's opportunity to have, you know, fucking deals with the Gap and all these other big companies. Well, Adidas was the and, big one. Uh, yeah, Gap, Adidas, Vogue people calling your phone. Like, people would love to be in that position. And they just see you fuck the shit up in two weeks. It's crazy. Now, he's a boss, so he could do whatever the fuck he want to do. But at the end of the day, all the shit you were saying, the George Floyd shit, the Hitler shit, the shit is all fucking ridiculous. You know, people died. People lost their family. That's like, I was in Germany. So I I went to the, the center of the square, was across the street from a hotel. It's a clear floor with bookshelves. And I'm like, what is this here for? They said, this is where Hitler burnt all the Jewish people books. Mm. You know, there was books from like famous philosophers and all kinds of people, Einstein, he sat there, he burnt the books. You see through the ground, and it's empty bookshelves down there of all the books that he burnt. This guy was a fucking tyrant, bro. Well, so yeah. what he did to people is, is fucked up. So for you to glorify anybody that did some fucked up shit like that, bro, is people, of course, people are gonna look at you like you're crazy, bro. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you've seen uh, 
his new logo for Yay 24, you know, because I guess he's running for president, it's basically a swastika. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? That's fucking crazy. Hold on a second. This is Kanye's new logo. Oh, that's fucking ridiculous, bro. Crazy. I mean, look. I mean, yo, yo bro, some people are just are just crazy, man. You know, I mean, Kanye always saying some crazy shit, you know? I mean, before, when I came out and dropped my album, I'm going to be said, the president is racist. So he changed from a long way to this way. Oh, yeah, yeah. George <laughs> Bush. Uh, yeah, that was 205. Uh, I dropped my album. care about black people, yeah. I remember, like, that was like, because my album was out and I'm promoting my album. And I remember the president, George Bush is racist. He always was a a talkative guy and a fearless guy, which yeah. is cool. But when you start saying dumb shit, people's going to call you out for it at the end of the day. If I say some dumb shit, you, nobody's exempt. No, I mean, listen, I agree. Like I when mean, you said the dumb shit about the video games, and I just got a PS5 for Christmas, so I'm happy. <laughs> I still stand on my shit, shit, but that's cool. You got people making money off of video games. It's all good. <laughs> no, so, I mean, look, I mean, mm -hmm. to love Hitler as a black person is so ignorant. Brother, Hitler to love Hitler as any person, people. you're a fucking idiot. Nobody's going to glorify a, a fucking tyrant. Look, right? this is an actual fact, right? When Hitler came into power, he forcibly sterilized all the mixed race people in, in uh, Germany. Everyone who was half black, half German. So without anest anesthesia, Hitler forced all the mixed people to get sterilized so they wouldn't muddle the race. His Crazy. words. Kanye has mixed kids. So to say he loves the guy that would have sterilized his children when Kanye's anti-abortion I think he's just ignorant. I think he's just lost right now, but there's no excuse when you say some dumb shit. Nobody's exempt. Yeah. You're saying some dumb shit at the end of the day. I don't care how much money you got or, or how much cars or how much bitches. If you say some dumb shit, the people's going to check you on it. Yeah. You're saying some dumb shit. I got Jewish friends. I got Italian friends. I got Russian friends. I got all kind of friends, bro. Like I said, I came up in New York. It's a melting pot of people. That's how we grew up, bro. My next door neighbor might be Trinidadian. This neighbor might be Italian. De definitely, come on, Jewish people. We grew up with Jewish people, Brooklyn, Queens, all over the neighborhood. And they never bother nobody. They, they, and, and, and I'm, I'm a person, I never bother nobody. So I could never say anything stupid like that. Right. It's fucking stupid. Black people and Jewish people. And that logo is fucking retarded. Agreed. It's stupid. I wouldn't even say retarded. Excuse me for saying that. that. It's fucking silly. It's insane for you to put two squash them, them stickers together and put it in one. That's crazy, man. Man, look, I lost, my grandfather had nine siblings, right. all of which got killed by Nazis. You know what I mean? He, he joined the military and ended up leaving, and then his, the city he lived in got bombed. So all his siblings died. That's just so you know what I'm saying? So I, Nazis have killed my family. Uh, of course. At the end of the day, Hitler was killing black people right along with So you with definitely Jewish saying people. fuck Kanye. Fuck Kanye. Fuck, fuck Kanye, it, man. I mean, I've, I've been saying I'm, it. Listen, I'm not getting a record by none of these guys. I'm not on the red carpet. And even if I was, I'm still going to tell you how I feel. Yeah. That's one thing I like about myself. Like, I'm still grounded, but I don't, I don't really give a fuck about the industry, the red carpet. It's never really did my, been my thing. There's times where I had to hide at MTV. <laughs> There's times where I'm like, yo, I don't want to do the, you want to do the red carpet? No, I'm good. I'm not with that shit. I've never been like that. I just was a guy that was from the streets and thank God we got to the position we got into because a lot of people get killed. They don't make it. They go to jail and we made it. Thank God. Lil Romeo and Master P were going at it recently. Oh yeah, that's crazy. You have kids and your kids did not grow up anything like you. Right. They well, my son, my oldest son, I feel like he was, he grew up in Southside, so he was more like in the okay. streets. But your daughter? Yeah, my daughter and my youngest, my daughter and my youngest son, they grew up in the suburbs. Exactly. Right. Like, like a, um. La Romeo. Romeo, right. Right. You know, and they went back and forth. Romeo's 33, by the way. Right. So there was a whole thing about the, oh, you know, dad, you spent all my money paying off your own taxes right. and everything. And, right. you know, Master P, like, yo, you're, you're spoiled, you're 33, you know, why are you coming at me right now? And no one could deny that Lil Romeo got a huge opportunity because of Master P. Of course, Master P, it, it's definitely. The fact that he had TV shows right. and albums and whatever else. Yeah, I remember Romeo was as big as Bad Wild. Exactly. Yeah, was as big as, yeah. I mean, you could, you could say that. But he's saying he didn't get a check, right? He didn't That's get a check. I mean, right? when you look at your own situation, your own kids, 
do you ever worry about you know your kids turning on you and being spoiled I and mean, everything else I like that? I don't. I don't really worry about that. I don't. You don't. I mean, it depends on the situation. You know what I mean? And like, I I don't know. Like when you look at Romeo, maybe Romeo's upset. He felt like he didn't get a check, and then his dad might have a side. Well, I spent money on this, or you know, I bought you this car, or whatever it is. It's kind of like a in-house situation. But I felt like they should have took it off a line than be on the internet with it. Because everybody, people just make a mess out of everything. Because definitely was checking that. Because, you know, we love messy shit on the internet. You know that. Yeah, but I, I don't but, like seeing fathers and sons go at it. You know I what mean, I'm saying? Like, it's, that, it's, that, that to me is like, it's uh, a It's a part of life. You know, you might yeah. have some kids that love you. You might have some kids that hate you. It's different. You know, as your job as a parent, you just got to do what you got to do. He, his Master P took care of him, right? Yeah. He's good. He went to college or whatever he did, right? Yeah. So, like you said, what you complaining now for? At 33, not much to complain about. If I didn't get a check by Master P, I would have complained that at 12, 13 years old. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dad, where's my money? Like, he was big enough to, you know, at 17 or 18, it would have been like, all right, well, where's my royalty checks? Or somebody would have been speaking for me, well, Dad, where's, where's my checks at? You know what I mean? How much I'm getting off the show, Dad? I mean, I know he started off as a kid rapper, so he probably was controlling his money because when when um, Romeo dropped? Well, he was 12? We, Something like that, yeah. He was young. But he kept rapping to what? 20? 18? Akon recently did an interview which raised some eyebrows. And he he actually was supportive of Nick Cannon and 12 kids that he has. And Akon himself has nine kids. And he he admits that he's not always present in all their kids' activities. He said, uh, you know, I don't go to every recital. You know, that's a white man's thing. Who gives a fuck about a recital? Right. You know, my job is to raise my kids, to be responsible, to be understanding, protect their mother, give a hand to their father, assist with family planning, and so right. forth. So if I miss recitals, then oh well. Right. You know, for example, I, I brought this up to Life Jennings, and he goes, well, you could say that, but your kids will remember all those missed recitals. They gonna remember that, you know? And that's, that's how I be feeling. Like, my goal is not to just uh, provide for my kids because there's a lot of stuff that I turn down because my kids have something going on. I think that my goal is, I can't never predict or, or make them come out a certain way, but my goal is to be there enough that they understand that if it don't go the right way, then they can come to dad. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I done been to cheerleading, football, baseball. So I've been through it, and, and to me, the moments mean everything. Sometimes it means more than money. Because mm. you can have money and don't spend time with your kids, and they'll be like, oh, fuck, dad, never spend time with me. It's a catch-22 to everything. And you can have no money and just take your kid to go get ice cream, and they'll be happy. And then when it comes with the kids, it depends on the man. Acorn is African, so, you know, some Africans, you know, their belief is I can have more than one wild or Muslim. One on one wife is all how you grew up. Yeah, his dad had three wives and this he had 18 siblings. Well, did, well, there you go. That's how he grew up. Right. So if he grew up like that, if my parents was like that, what you usually turn out to be which how you you grew up, right? Like my parents were Catholic, I turned Catholic. Yeah. If your parent your parents was Jewish, you turned Jewish. Right. If your parents was Muslim, you're gonna turn Muslim. So his dad had three wives. Well, do you do you go? That's how he grew up. Because when you go to Muslim countries, it's some certain places, it's like that. To have three or four wives, but, you know, in America, it's not really like that. And how we grew up, it wasn't really like that. My parents, my mom's had, you know, my dad had one wife. Right. <laughs> you know, my so, dad had one wife. Yeah, so it's all how you grow up. I'm only up. child. Yeah, like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, just yeah. what I'm saying. It's all yeah. how you grow up. You actually remember 50 Cent's first rhyme. Yeah. Can you spit it? It was, it was, I think it was in my man Fast Shaw basement. Rest in peace to Fast Shaw. And it was the sale went stale. Quarter mail bail. Fresh out the jail. Shit is really real. Niggas is locked up, man. I pray they don't tell. A hundred man indictment. My lawyer got to fight this. Niggas know. I ain't never pressed for dope. Niggas know. I don't serve nobody I don't know. Son said he was from OT. So 11 and OZ. This man brought him to me, but he ain't really no B. Said it was hot. Duke was a cop. He was just trying to pop to put the new beebs on the drop. I, that's all I remember. But that was, that rhyme to me was like, that was when like, I was like, nah, this nigga is like, he had other shit, but that was in my man basement, Fat Shop. And I was just like, yo, this nigga's getting better by the minute. 
So was this before or after Jam Master J showed up? Um, it was probably like in between, because like I said, we used to sell drugs and go to my man Fat Shy house when the police run around, when the gun police out, or homicide looking for somebody, or or or, or warrant squad niggas would just pack it up, go to my man house, you know, house okay. where you could chill. My man Fat Shy, and and we just just be in there spitting, smoking, and Fifth just used to come down there, and that was one of the raps I remember he did. Mm. I miss my nigga Fat Shy because. He was a big part of my um, my career, like musically, being around a DJ, production, you know. We was rapping, had a mic down there. We ain't nothing serious, but we had the two, two, two 1200s, Gemini mix and a microphone. I mean, because 50 didn't set out to be a rapper. Because from what I understand, I that think, he was just hanging out, and then yeah, we, Jam Master J was like, are you a rapper? He was like, nah, but he looked like a rapper. I don't think nobody sets out to be a rapper. I think it's just something. And, and this is why I said rap is a blessing, because it feeds a lot of families and a lot of kids. It helps a lot of people down to security, to assistance, to, you know, the guy that holds the camera, to the guy that holds the microphone, everything. Yeah. You know, and we never planned out to be rappers. We just got lucky. It was in God's plan, because... I mean, some people set out to be rappers. Listen, that's not no, true. I don't so think some so. Pe- some people were like, yo, I don't like, really, I really love rap and I'm going to start rapping from really, an early age. I don't age. really think so. I think people just get into it. Like, like, like you see the kids from the Bronx, they just go to the studio, they drill. I don't think that, like, that, like that we still was in the streets. Like, people are still in the streets and they just do rap as a hobby. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, when, like I said, when gun police out, Warren Squad police out, yo, go to Fast Shot House. Let's go down there and fuck with some beats, write some music. So, all right, cool, the block is hot, but if it was selling drugs over music, it was selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? Well, it did one the of music. them was making money, right? Yeah, because the rap the music wasn't, making, wasn't no money. making me no yeah. money at that time. So, it was a hobby for me. I love music. That was the thing. We love 50, love music. Banks love music. We love hip hop. So, we used to be in my man's basement. He'll get the new fucking um, Wu Tang instrumental album. Um, um, when the Killer Bees anthem came out, or he'll be playing Anita Baker, or he could be playing a, a, a fucking um, um, fucking Fuji's, or it was all kind of hip hop. My man had a room full of crates of music, so that's all we used to do: was sell drugs and fuck with music. And that's what a lot of people do in the hood: they sell their drugs, do what they do. They got their PlayStation, PlayStation involved. They <laughs> gotta be there. We sold drugs. We did what we had to do, especially when it's cold. We make our sales. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go fuck with the music. Let me go fuck with the turntables. Let me put a blend together. Let me do this. So music was like that. My man house was a big part of G-Unit, what we did. Mm. I mean, did Jam Master J really work with 50 to kind of help him yeah, structure I mean, his raps Jam and Master everything? Vic, Jam Master J taught 50 song, code, um, song um, structure. Structure. Okay. Were you and, there when that was happening? And you got to think. No, I, I used to go to the studio. I went to the studio a couple of times, but I was selling drugs and I was busy. And fifth, you know, at that time he had a Benz, so that's what really caught on to, you know, the art of seduction. If a motherfucker already got money already, listen, a motherfucker only do favors for you when when you don't need a favor. Mm. When I'm fucked up and I need a favor, motherfuckers ain't gonna give me no favor. But when I don't need a favor, a motherfucker's gonna do a favor for me. So fifth already had money. He had a Mercedes Benz, seventeen, sixteen. He had a Ford Runner. He had a Mercedes Benz. He had cars already. He, was doing everything a rapper do, had chains, had all that already. Went around with thousands. So Jay fucked with him because he'd seen him at the club in a big ass Benz. Know what I'm saying? And rest in peace to Jay, man. You know what's crazy? Look, look at this right here. Look at that. That's how that's how I know I'm a, I know I'm a I know I'm a north, I know I'm a, a south side nigga. Shout to the north side too, but look at that. Shout to We Working. Those are Jam Master J socks because I had his cassette um, Wee Strand that came out. I got the Jam Master J socks on. I, I think I had the Adidas. I don't know what happened to them. Mm. I had those and I had the Eminem Air Max that when I moved from my condo to my house, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know how they got missing. You want to hear something very interesting that sort of shows an interesting sort of connection, full circle, uh-huh. after the fact kind of thing? Right. We had actually reported on the story. Because, mm-hmm. you know, 50's working on the BMF series. He's exactly right. producing That's the coming BMF out. series. It'll be out in a couple Season of days. Two. Y'all check right. that out. Exactly. Shout out to Little Meech, Lala, everybody yep. on the show. Is going oh, Lala's to on it now? Yeah. Okay. Lala's on the show, man. Shout out to Lala. I knew her for so long. Mm-hmm. Southwest T, mm-hmm. you know, the BMF co-founder. Right. 
is actually they're trying to drag him into court right now. Wow. Because they're saying was that when Jam Master J got killed. Right. Shout to Southwest T too, man. It's good. Well, what they were saying was was that Jam Master J at the time of his death mm -hmm. was selling drugs and the drugs were coming from Southwest T. So right. trying to get Southwest T to testify. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you heard about this? Accusations. I think I did see it. Yeah. On, on, not sure on. if it's true, but well, this, this hope, is what I the, hope the it's fans not are true. And I, I, you know, Southwest T did some time. He's a stand-up dude. You know, yeah. I, I met him a couple of times, and um, you know, messed with him on the gram a couple of times. He's a cool dude, and I hope he doesn't have to do that. It's an unfortunate thing. I hope they don't try to drag him in court for anything to do with Jay. But the BMF shit is coming January. Yeah. Shout to Fifty. Shout to Southwest T. Shout to Little Meach, Free Meach. You know what it is, man. Biggest to do it, and this is gonna. I, I'm I'm waiting for something to come on TV. You know, I've been catching a lot of movies, but you know, I've been no, waiting for the series to drop. I, I love the BMF series, of and course. you know, especially especially me who I've I've hung out with. You know, yeah. BMF and and big. I, I was at Big Misha's house. Right. You know, what I'm saying Definitely. when he was on house arrest, when he see how the ankle Definitely. monitor see, I didn't and everything. Even know that. Like that. I know you was around. I, oh, I know yeah, you no, was they, around they, for some shit. Those guys, because you went smack. I know y'all yeah, was around for. Some well, shit. yeah. I mean, because if you remember at the time, this is like 2004. I had the biggest mixtape out, the, the oh, Tupac definitely. rap phenomenon mixtape. You, know, you walk past that plaque over there, it was mixtape of the year. Definitely. And, and those guys loved that shit, and they flew me out to party with them. So I got to be around BMF and, yeah, you know, and everything and, else like that. I remember, and they was talking about the um the infamous Sue's Rendezvous. I wasn't. Yeah, I didn't get to that. see that. But, but I got to see uh, Atlanta. Atlanta versus Atlanta was insane. Atlanta versus New York. Sue's Rendezvous was. Oh, shout I heard to about Slay, this. I, I saw videos Slay. of that. But I heard that was one of the sickest parties ever. <laughs> And shout to BMF, like, the illest niggas do it, man. Well, you had said that Young Buck was actually hanging out with BMF a lot. Yeah, Young Buck, Spider Low, they was hanging out with um, Meech and them, you know, a lot, you know. You I, kind could, of, I, I couldn't hang out with them. There's too much money you got to spend hanging with them motherfuckers. <laughs> and you kind of implied that, that some of Young Buck's spending habits came from I mean, hanging out with BMF, yo, which kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You would go broke hanging with um, Meech and them niggas, man. Because I didn't they spend money, no money around those Their money was, yeah. a, a, like, a, you know, their money was different. Like, you hear the stories, yo, niggas would come to the club, buy all the bottles and Sue's. Like, my man was just telling me, Sue's Rendezvous, Atlanta versus New York, flew all Atlanta bitches in. Bought every bottle in the club. The club, imagine coming to the bottle and to the club and there's no more bottles. Right, because one guy bought yeah, them all. Yeah, Meech and Southwest, man, the way they used to do it in the clubs, man, it was just ridiculous, man. I remember when when they, when Blue Da Vinci and all them was dropping and Jeezy, it was just like crazy, bro. I mean, when you look at, for example, Lil Meech, the Richard Mille watch situation, right. which they ultimately dropped the charges right, for. Right, right. Now there's the whole gun situation at the airport. And he explained I think he, they dropped that too. Though. I think they're going to drop it too because what he said was his security and him have the, the same, exact yeah, same it bag. It happens if you have the same bag and he's licensed, you might pick up that bag by accident. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. I mean, I still feel like, and I've interviewed Lil Meech before, like way before the BMS. Yeah, series. definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, 50, and he explained how he was on. sheltered I'm, from, from yeah, everything I remember Meech like was, he was Lil Meech was rapping and shit like that. Yeah. And, and doing his thing and shit. Your mom, did she ever tell you what your dad did for a living or, or anything else like that? No, not at all. No chance. She didn't tell me none of that. She told me he was on a business trip. She kept switching the story though. I remember he, first he was on a business trip. Next he was on a job. Like he went to um, a job interview or something, something she told me. Well, no, but I mean, but before before your dad actually got convicted, did you ever ask what your dad did, did for a living? Oh, no, that wasn't even on my mind at all. I was just focused on having fun. I mean, do you feel like in a way, and this to me is just, it's not, it's not a, it has nothing to do with Lil Misha's character, but a lot of times when you have your dad and he's, esteemed to such a level and he's known for this type of thing that you try to emulate your father and you try to catch up even though at the end of the day Lil Meech is not you know is not a street guy he has a real career you see what I'm saying he's an actor that's he how, pays taxes that's how but look but that's how you might look at it yeah you might say he's not a real street guy but when he walk out the house he feel like I'm a real street guy if a nigga do something to me I'm gonna punch him in his face if a nigga try to rob me I'm gonna violate him so, like, you might feel like this guy's not a street guy because he's acting. Nah, that, that don't mean shit. I, I say that? I met a lot of dudes from Power. Some of them dudes is like, is, I met a couple of dudes that play on um, Tommy shit. 
Yeah. They was kind of wild boys. Like sometimes I think when you think, yo, he's just an actor. A motherfucker be like, what? I'm a street nigga. At the, listen, listen. Okay. At the end of the day, I done heard actors say this. Yeah, yo, niggas think I'm just a fucking actor. And they'll do some wild shit because they feel like they got to prove they self. Hmm. That's like, like, like you said, because your father was ill, nigga, or like, or, or like a, a, a fucking Meech. He got a lot of pressure because his father was a real nigga. Just like uh, E-Money Bags, his his son will have a lot of pressure because his dad was a real nigga. Or, or, or Troy will have a, 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 hard, a hard, you know what I'm saying? A hard time because his father was a real nigga. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but it's all on how you feel about it. You know what I'm saying? When I say this, it, listen, okay. it's all on how you feel. You might right. feel like, yo, I can never match up to what my father did, or I can, or I can match up to what my father did. But what some of our fathers did, they in jail, they dead, got cases. I mean, so why would you want to match? Your father would want, Meech's father want him to win, of course. Exactly. And, and when I say, when well, we I can't say, say he's not a street dude. No, no, no. Listen, well, I, I'm, I'm saying, when I say he's not a street guy, I'm not saying. That he's a pushover, no, or no, he's no, not, not he's not a, yeah. he, he's not gonna stand up for how he feels. But I interviewed him when he was like, I don't know, 17, 18. Right. And his mother was there, and he went into the whole story about how he didn't even know what his dad was doing until later in life. Right. He was shielded, his mother shielded him away from it. Right. He was not selling drugs, he was not in the street. His his dad's you know, what his dad did afforded him a nice sheltered life, right. which is what we all want for our kids. All right. I'm not insulting little Meech. No, I know I that. want little Meech to win. Of course. And he is winning right now. It's just worrisome to me that, like, listen, if you're looking up to your dad, your dad is still in prison right now. I mean, yo, listen, I've I've done it. Money and power. When you got money, power, you could you got motherfuckers that'll uh, shoot for you, do whatever for you. Yeah. It gets to your fucking head. It's happened to me. It happened to the best of us. It's happened to me. You know, I, I've gotten now, caught up in having yeah. people around me that do my dirt for me. Yeah. I get it. Yo, punch him in the face. Whatever. Exactly. You get caught up in the hype. You got bitches now. You got jewelry now. You got, there's a motherfucker that did it before you, and there's going to be a motherfucker that did it after you. The way you hold your mentality is on you, because money and power is a motherfucker. I told you, it was a point where I felt like I was unstoppable. I got lawyer money. I got bitches. I got cars, Bentleys. Everything, nigga. I got clothes, nigga. What? Nigga can't tell me nothing, nigga. But at the end of the day, court cases, paid money. It was a lot of headaches to that shit, too. People could have got killed. Almost got my sister killed. My niece. Like, it was a lot to that shit. So it was a lot of shit to come with this game we play, bro. Yeah. So you, you let money and power get to your head? We was lucky. You know what I'm saying? But that money and power get to your head? You feel like you unstoppable? My can't catch a case? can't do this, next thing you know, you got all kind of charges, bro, adding up because you running around acting like your shit don't stink or acting like you get away with a lot of shit. It's not going to happen like that, bro. Motherfuckers going to sue you, break a nigga jaw, he going to sue you, you do that, you shoot at a nigga, he going to tell it you he wants some money. Like, come on, we all know what it come down to, especially when you a high profile person. Yeah. Them lawsuits come. I've seen them. Oh, yeah, no, I remember... Uh... What was it? Uh, or the podcast you did with the Power Guys? Yeah, you know, you said like, look, a lot of the the rappers out there are are damaged. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm not sure if that's the word you used, but it was yeah, something yeah, of that sort. Yeah, it was damaged. Yeah, you know what I mean? They don't have therapy. Right. Their therapy is, let me go get high. Let me right. go get another gun. Right. Let me go talk to my man. Maybe. If he's right. even available. And right. look, listen, I've, I've had therapists during points in my life because I realized at one point that I can't talk to my friends about my real problems. I have to go pay someone to really do it right you know and to really create some your, healing. 50% of your friends is going to tell your fucking business. Exactly. And, other, and now they have and something on you. Look, and now the, the other 50% might listen to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people are just going to go around and tell your business. So where we from, we learn, all right, well, I could tell my friends certain things, but I ain't going to tell my friend everything everybody yeah. think like that or you know certain friends yo i could might tell him everything or tell her everything and it's not going to get back to nobody you know what i mean that's what a friend is but a lot of your friends are going to judge everybody judge shit yeah we all judge we might say we don't but we all judge people yeah. if you make a stupid decision you know what they're going to say yo yeah yo blew that money that nigga's stupid and i go for any celebrity yeah r kelly's in jail that nigga had i believe i could fly 
Think yeah. about it. Yeah. That nigga had, I believe I can fly, one of the biggest records in the world. And he's sitting in the pens with regular niggas chilling. What? Yeah. Shit don't even sound right, bro. Yeah. I mean, you even mentioned how 50, 50 is damaged because he yeah, didn't 50, know, he didn't know listen, his father and his mother He didn't mother know who his father was on. and his mom was in the streets so, so and no she parents. got killed. Yeah. There's no parents there. Your grandparents are older. You're damaged, bro. You was outside. The streets taught niggas. A lot of niggas are damaged. A lot of see, shootings you see, you see a uh, 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 an 18, uh, 18-year-old kid stab his 16-year-old girlfriend somewhere in New York because he thought she was cheating. Motherfuckers be damaged, bro. That's what they see from parents. It's fucked up for certain places. Yeah. And sometimes you want to help and try to fix people. Your man say he do shit for the youth. That's real shit because that's where it starts at, trying to help them. But some people can't be helped. They just fucking bad seeds, bro. Yeah. I mean, some free, people free, can't free K them. flock. You got to remember, where them niggas are from, it's not a game. In the Bronx, that shit is not a game with um, K flock. I got a chance to meet Booba Savage. I like the kid. But it's not a game. It's not play play over there. Where they at? Shit is real. It's life or death. Yeah, I mean, you know listen, I, mean? I interviewed B Love. It's life. You know what I mean? All I them little, B, B listen, Love. all like, them little Bronx all drill those niggas. Dudes? Listen, all them young niggas, it's life or death, man. When you look at D Thing, because I'm a fan. I listen to Booba Savage, Shadi K, K Flock. I'm a fan. I listen to all kind of music. The young boys, the older music, different genres of music. But where they from is a fucking war zone, bro. Yeah, I mean, you know, the I'm, coming in New York City, the Bronx is one of the one of the fucking toughest boroughs to come up in, right? We would agree. I, I, dudes, I completely agree. And look, like I remember, you know, when B Love, when I interviewed him, you know, I said flat out, when you look at like the the New York drill sound, mm -hmm. "Shake It" was my favorite song out of the whole genre. Yeah, shake, you know what I'm saying? "Shake It" shake. was a huge song. Cardi B jumped yeah, yeah, on it, like B, it was yeah, the that biggest was, that song. Was definitely, shocking. K Flock wasn't even in the video. Because he's facing a murder charge, right? Right. So you're going on, well, you and your crew is going on this mega run and everything is, all your dreams are coming together and then disaster strikes when K. Flock uh, got arrested uh, for murder. It's an open case, so I don't want to talk about the details yeah. at all. But have you guys been talking at all while he's been locked up? Yeah, I, speak, I spoke to bro a couple of times and shit. He and Gus Burris for sure. You see how 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 sad that is on so many levels. Like, right, right, right. It's and look, it, it it might at the end of the day, free K Flock. It might be self defense, hopefully, and he, maybe he'll be able to walk away. He's got El Chapo's lawyer, you know, working with no, him. No, he got um Scott Lehman. Oh, is that Scott Lehman now? Yeah, Scott Lehman. He has our lawyer. Okay, Scott Lehman's working the case. Okay, Shepard. good. Scott, yeah, good. So he might get off. But what I'm saying is like, yo, it's it's sad to see a teenager who has all the potential in the world suddenly be sitting in a cell. Over shit that he probably and has been ingrained is, is, in doing all where, these years. Where did that happen at? His situation, not saying it's accusation that he, you know, where did yeah. it happen? Supposedly in Manhattan, the Bronx, I right? Think. Was it the Bronx or Manhattan? Don't be in the hood, bro. Yeah. That's it. We already solved this problem with rappers. Niggas want you to be in the hood, but if you be in the hood, you you showing your street credibility, right? You showing niggas that you still in the hood. But at the same time, right? He, he was in Harlem when it happened. By okay, me. but he was in the same, hood. Same difference, yeah. Okay, but at the same time, where do rappers get in trouble at? The hood, right? Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm trying to chill in Calabasas with you. Right. You know what I mean? I want to be at the When was the last time you went, you went to, to Southside and just hung out all day? I mean, I, you know what? I go to Southside and I go to like a New York fried. I go to one of my favorite food spots. I'll, I'll be in any kind of car. I don't have to get out all the time. Sometimes I'll get out, wear a hoodie, people won't see me. I go to Margaritas, get my favorite pizza. Margaritas, my spot on Jamaica Avenue. Mm -hmm. Or I go to New York Fry, get my chicken, go see my moms. I move around. My mom's still in the hood, so I'm still there. It's just, okay. I'm not letting niggas know I'm there. Okay, so okay. so let's just say that this weekend you decide uh -huh. to hang out on one of your old corners the whole day. Would something potentially bad happen? Nah, because I can go to my mom's house any day and chill and like... Not at the house, outside, on, on the any corner. block. I can go to any block in Queens and be good. I'm solidified. Okay. I feel like I can go to any borough and be solidified. But you I don't just, do that, though. For what? What do I have to prove? What, I, uh, this is my whole thing. As an artist, what do I have to prove? Yeah. I'm in my 40s. What do I care about being on the corner anymore? Right. 
That's shit that, you know, I act my age. That shit that niggas, you know, in their fucking 20s and 18, 19 want to be on the corner of the block. Like, that's not entertaining for me. Me, entertaining for me is going to the Louvre in Paris, going to see the Mona Lisa. Right. That doesn't, inter- when I was younger, yes, I used to be on the block every day. That entertained me. But now me, you know, being in Greece on a yacht, that entertains me. I like shit like that. I love that I could eat Jamaican beef patties, right? Like I could lose it or I could lose it all, right? And get it back again. Because I can go from escargot to Jamaican beef patties and not go crazy. You know what I'm saying? I could do that. You know what I mean? Some days it might be escargot or caviar. Some days I want a beef patty with cocoa bread. I could do that. I stay humble. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, look, uh, rest in peace. Uh... You know, DJ Twitch Boss, right. who was the DJ for Ellen. Right. Uh, 50 Rest actually performed on Ellen before. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I, I looked definitely. it up. And look, I, we don't know exactly what happened. He committed suicide. Right. But I could tell you, as a former full-time DJ, when you are all invested in being a DJ for a particular organization, like, I've seen this happen all the time with radio DJs. They're on Hot 97 for five years. Suddenly they lose their job. And, you know, all the gigs they got was based on their radio. You know, right, right. DJing you know, in the clubs, yeah, they yeah, get def- a bigger amount because def- they're on the radio. Suddenly they're not on def- the radio no more. They go from 2000 a night to $200 a night. Right. And, and it's hard, man. I'm sure that, you know, I mean, this guy had a family, had three kids, and suddenly yeah, he's been on the show him, for a decade, and suddenly his, his income drops. He no longer feels like the man in the house. His wife is probably paying a lot of the bills. I'm sure that hurts, man. Oh, and, no. You know, I mean, yo, listen, man. I mean, finances, you know, finances play a major part in any relationship, any marriage. As as you for the man, you you know, you known as the provider. So mm-hmm. when shit is not going all right, of course, it could affect any relationship or any state of mind of thinking. Because Even though life is not about finances, but you need it to live. You, you need You know, rest in to peace live. to him. And, you know, hopefully he would have got help for that because, you know, suicide is a messed up thing. You know, I, I wouldn't suggest anybody to kill themselves, no matter how bad or good it get, you know. But, you know, me, I come from the bad, so I can, you know, I feel like if I lose it all, I could just got to hustle up and get it back again. Yeah. That's just how it is. Life has its ups and downs, and I had to learn that. I'm going to be on a high horse, G-Unit. I'm going to the roller coaster was going up. But once the roller coaster go down, and people still going to kiss 50 ass because he's 50 cent. But once I G-Unit roller coaster went down, Motherfuckers, everybody was different. Motherfuckers wasn't answering the phone. Motherfuckers weren't cool. You see how you do. And these are the same people you flying around the world. You taking care yeah. of their family. You giving their family money. You they in your house. They eating your food, your eggs. They borrowing your cars. But you know life has its ups and downs. And you realize who's real and who's not. Yeah. In them situations. When you and I first met, which was maybe around two thousand and four. Mm-hmm. I was borderline homeless at the time. And that was after I had made like a million dollars and lost it all. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I was during the whole dot-com boom. I Ooh. had my own company. I had employees, a big office. I got married, bought a half million dollar house, had the drop top bends. And then the dot-com crash happened and wiped me the fuck out. Yeah. And I had to move to, and I decided to switch careers and become a DJ. And I moved to New York and I was sleeping on my man's couch, DJing at the China Club. Because, wow. you know, his brother was a promoter there. Right. And when I met you, you remember how I looked back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't wearing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was dressed bummy. Yeah, you I, I was, <laughs> yeah. You remember You remember those days? Yeah, I remember those I was those holding days. the camera myself. I had no cameraman. Yeah, I didn't no have this big studio. He was doing everything by yourself. That's I was why, doing it all by myself. That's why I always say I always got to respect yeah. Vlad. This is 50, World Star, uh, Forbes DVD. Yeah. Like, I always respect... Because those were, you know, the websites you go to. This is 50, World Star, Forbes. Flat. It took me Media a decade. Takeout. I it, used to be on these shits like yeah. what? It took me a decade to get back where I was before. Definitely. And there was a lot of hard times along the way, man. I I remember going over my my cell phone minutes and getting a five hundred dollar bill and feeling like my life was over. Like I couldn't pay that money. Yep. I, I remember not being able to buy food because I was dropping off mixtapes on consignment to the Africans in Queens. You definitely, know what I'm saying? Like it, it takes a while, too. and there's a lot of depression along the way, but. Yeah, man. I mean, if you got the hustle, you can yeah, rebuild. It's, but it's not going to happen like that. Definitely, It's, it's going to take a while. It's tough in this business. You know, like, I, I mean, even when you see me doing these interviews, like, I'm like I'm back from the dead, man. Mm. Like, you know, people like to write you off and, 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 you know, 
and, and say, oh, he's over or he's washed up or say bad things about you, but it's all the work you put in. Yeah. You know, I've been doing these interviews, shout to all the young people and all the people all over, the doctors and everybody that's seeing these flat interviews. But one thing I learned is you have to work. Yep. If you don't work, a lot of people think they're working. They're not working. And there's times where I wasn't working. I got spoiled. I was lazy. Nah, I'm working, bro. You got to yep. work. And that's what these Vlad interviews are about, working, going into this new year. I mean, it's the last interview mm -hmm. for the year, going yep. into the new year. And we working, man. All right, last question before I let you go. All right. Who did it better? Oh, man, that's, that's a funny one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun. We gotta show the camera that one, man. No, we're gonna show it that, on screen. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely, <laughs> man. All my viral moments come from 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 Vlad TV, man. I appreciate it. this is interview number five. I think so. We're yeah. gonna keep going like Lil Boosie, man, and yeah. Jock and everybody on this show, man. We're gonna yep. keep going, man. That's how it is, Tony Yayo. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Peace. Yes. <laughs>